what a season it's been for Chris Tillman. The Orioles have won eight of his ten starts, and they look to do it again today as the Birds wrap up the nine-game road trip. It's a road trip that has taken the Birds through three different time zones, beginning in Anaheim, where the team took game one with the help of back-to-back -back home runs. Then in game two, Matt Wieters picked up the team with a ninth-inning blast that woke up all of Baltimore as the Birds won the series. In Houston, we had a problem, and the frustration mounted. And after winning the series opener in Cleveland, the Orioles look to take two out of three. Can they do it? Find out next, the rubber game on Massive. on Masson. We're in Cleveland on a hot and steamy Sunday afternoon. It's the Orioles and the Indians today, the rubber game in this three-game weekend series. And hi, everyone. I'm Jim Hunter. The Orioles close out this long nine-game road trip today, looking for a win to get two out of three in Cleveland before heading home for the showdown series with the Red Sox beginning tomorrow afternoon. And when you need a win, it's good to be able to hand the baseball to the best pitcher on the team. Chris Tillman is beginning this year as the end of 2014. He has been very, very consistent. In 2014, he pitched to an ERA of 3.34, and he won six of his last seven decisions. His ERA this year is stellar, and he has won six of his first seven decisions. So he's consistent. The Orioles looking for a win. They want to go home on a high note. And Jim, Chris Tillman right now, he is pitching as aces pitch. Well, he really is. Yeah, I think, you know, everybody said, well, okay, well, the problem in 2016 for the Orioles is going to be their starting pitching. They don't really truly have a number one guy. Chris Tillman is pitched like a number one guy. He did it in 2014. 20 out of his last 21 starts, three runs or less. Now that's amazing pitching. Is he ready? Well, <laughs> I went to Starbucks at 7 this morning. He's already in the lobby. Uh, he said Zach Britton, the Oriole closer, called him at 7.15. Let's go to the ballpark. So, you know, he knows this is an important game. He also knows Cleveland has a very good offense. And, you know, again, and, you know, this is, they're playing well. I mean, it's always tough to win here, tough to win on the road. But he understands. I mean, it's a big difference between going three and six on this tough road trip or four and five. He would have liked to have had a better record. But at the end of the day, he's still got to go out there and do his job. But, you know, this year he's a different pitcher, better velocity, you know, really worked hard in the offseason. He's added a slider, at least a more consistent slider, got the big curveball and the fastball. And if you go back to his last start, he only the hang and change up for a two run home run, only runs he's given up. So if you're, if you're Buck Show Walter, you're very comfortable. You have a bullpen that's got a lot of innings uh, in this road trip. You got a guy that should, and I say should, give you a really good performance. And the Orioles look to get him some run support. The lack of run support cost him a win in his start on Tuesday. It's the Orioles and Indians. When we come back, Jim will chat with Zach Britton.
Orioles baseball on Masson is brought to you by Southwest transparency low fares nothing to hide and by Ocean City Maryland let us show you a good time in Ocean City Maryland book now at OCOcean.com. Overcast muggy here in Cleveland today on this Sunday afternoon talking about Chris Tillman as the ace of the staff but Zach Britton is the ace of the bullpen fourth in the American League among relievers with a 1.86 ERA the ground ball percentage better than anybody and he is tied for third Jim in save percentage 91.5 percent yeah nobody since 2014 in the American League with more saves so I had a chance to you know sit down before the game they didn't take batting practice today and said so how do you deal with the pressure. I think I've gotten used to it a little bit. Um, I think the biggest thing just focusing on one pitch at a time. I, I know it, uh, people say that, but they actually go out there and, and think through it and, and focus on making a good pitch, get the ball back from the catcher, and then focus in on making another good pitch. I think that helps kind of slow the game down a little bit and uh, makes it a little bit easier to go out there, um, you know, with the pressure, I guess, and and, uh, and execute and be successful. Well, you know, part of pitching is grip pressure and all that. Uh, I don't know about pressure, but the fact that the game kind of revolves about you. Um, you were a lot of people don't know you were a starting pitcher. You and you led the team in, in wins in 2011 with 11 had some shoulder problems. When you went to the bullpen in 2014 did you ever think you were going to end up being number one the closer and you know a, a typical year for you is maybe three or four blown saves with 35 or 36. Um, no I didn't think about closing at all. I know. Uh, Brady brought it up to me in spring training in 2014 asked me if I ever thought about it and I said not really. Um, my focus was going to be the long reliever in 2014 and then I was actually hoping to maybe get a chance to start again. Um, but as we got going uh, probably beginning of May or so maybe middle of May um, Dom Chidi just pulled me aside and said hey uh, if there's a save opportunity today you're probably going to be the guy so just be ready and uh, kind of took off from there. You know a lot of people don't understand all the work that goes in. Uh, you know mostly your games are what three outs you did have a five out save earlier but you know I was talking to Dom Chidi you mentioned him and the bullpen coach along with Dave Wallace one of the two pitching coaches and he talked about your workout I ran into Chris Tillman this morning at what seven o'clock in the morning um, it started in November so obviously for you there is no off season. No I mean, some guys can start later but um, yeah I like to start beginning of November really um, you know strengthening my shoulder. I start doing weighted ball stuff around Thanksgiving so I'm throwing a ball from Thanksgiving all the way through the end of the season uh, for me it's just um, I think the older I get to the more I got to stay on top of keeping my shoulder strong my body in general but uh, gotten on a good uh, workout program with Rio who's up here now um, worked out with him a lot in California and, and keep in contact with him throughout the offseason and uh, you know been down in Sarasota this offseason too with Tilly and we kind of just got after it you know he wanted to start out working a little earlier too and I had already been working out and uh, I feel like it benefited us a lot to come into the season ready to go. You know you've had a chance uh, Buck Showwater came over in 2010. You actually were starting pitcher for him. What's it like to play for Buck Showalter. You know uh, obviously being in the bullpen so now I've gotten two different aspects of it from a starter standpoint and a, a bullpen standpoint um, and you know he's one of those managers that really looks out for the health of his players his pitchers especially and I think uh, you appreciate that a lot. Uh, especially the bullpen he he spreads the load around a lot in the bullpen uh, he expects everyone in the bullpen to be able to throw multiple innings or get big outs and the way that we've kind of constructed the bullpen over the few years that he's been here I guess the last five years um, has been pretty impressive and I think you give him a lot of credit for the success that we have down there and obviously having Dave and Dom to, to kind of help him out with that as well but um, he's an awesome guy to pitch for and like I said especially being a reliever um, you look at our usage compared to other bullpens throughout the league and uh, we, we're going to we're never going to lead the league or one individual in appearances or innings for the most part and that's uh, I think that's the tell all and, and why we have a successful bullpen. So I think Zach's ready for today too. Uh, you know, on this trip three wins two saves by him got it. He's 13 out of 13 got his 13 save uh, on Friday night in that win so they need a win today pretty uh, pretty black and white and here's the Orioles Southwest starting lineup Southwest transparency low fares and nothing to hide Jones Kim and Machado uh, Manny Machado having a real good all around year 33 extra base hits Davis Trumbull and Weeders Scope Reimold and Flaherty back in the lineup at third base batting ninth. 
So they'll fade Mike Clevenger. It's going to be his third major league start. Uh, Cody Anderson was going to be one of the starters, one and three with a ERA almost seven runs a game. So, you know, he's, he's a young pitcher. He hasn't pitched well in the first two starts, but he's got a power arm, power breaking ball, slurve, and changeup. You can see the numbers. So, again, he didn't strike out some people. Uh, he was their minor league pitcher of the year last year. So, they pretty tall order. To, to pitch against the Orioles. You can see right he's hitting him better than lefties. And then they you know, in two games, three home runs. And not only that, they were a two run home run and a three run home run, uh, two of them. So that's a lot of runs. But, uh, you know, normally this would be what? Carlo Carrasco, Carlos Carrasco. But he had a hamstring problem last year, won 14 games. So Clevenger gets the ball and they, they're playing well. They hope he pitches well for them. Uh, last year he went nine and eight in double A Akron, so he saw the Bowie Bay Sox. And he will go to work on the Orioles' new leadoff hitter, Adam Jones, who has enjoyed leading off. He has hits in each of the two games in this series since moving into the number one spot. Adam at 236 on the year, five home runs, and the home run ball continues to elude him now 49 consecutive at bats without a long ball. He last went deep on May 14th. You know, we know he's a better hitter when he doesn't try to hit home runs. They just come. And uh, you know that home run as we mentioned on Friday night that was off Verlander gave the Orioles a one nothing victory. And it was a pretty good fastball up and away. He just happened to hit it over the left center field fence at Camden Yards back at home. Unusual delivery by Clevenger. Well, most pitching coaches, and we talked to Mickey Calloway before the game, and he said, listen, you know, he, he's young and he's got a good arm. He's going to have to, number one, learn what it takes to throw strikes, be successful. And that's hard to do in two starts. As we mentioned, this is start number three. And he misses three in a row to Adam Jones. Now, is this a timing mechanism, the toe tap? Oh, yeah. He gets his weight back. I mean, it's a very simple windup. Now, does he, you know, his head go to home plate? Is he going to try too hard because he's seen the Orioles for a couple of days? There's a good low and away fastball. You know, and what Mickey said, and he's done a really nice job with the staff, he said, listen, this is not a guy that's going to have pinpoint control. I mean, his strike zone is somewhere in that rectangle. So he's going to try to get by just with stuff, and we'll see how that works. Take a look at their defense, and there is, as we know, no defense for, for leadoff walk. walks. Ramirez, Davis, and uh, we get Marlon Bird in right field today. Uribe, Lindor, Kipnis, Santana, and then uh, Jan Gomes, who drove in three runs yesterday, he has a chance to catch one. Yoon Soo Kim getting another start. He has become a regular in this lineup. Batting average at 386. He is six for 15 on the road trip, a 400 batting average. And it's up and away, one to know. So it looks like you better be patient against Clevenger. Well, it's it, it's it's patience, and it's also because as a young pitcher, you're going to hit off the fastball. Make sure you get a good pitch to hit. Uh, even though he's what thrown uh, five out of six pitches for balls, you get your pitch, swing it. And he, we've seen Kim hit. He's very deliberate, very discerning of the plate. Not afraid to hit with two strikes. Well, Clevenger, 25 years old, he's from Florida, grew up in Jacksonville. And he went to junior college in Florida at Seminole Community College. And a bouncer foul. And he was drafted by the Angels, Jim, in the fourth round of 2011. A curious trade that the Angels traded a young starting pitcher to the Indians. For a relief pitcher, Vinny Pestano went to the Angels in, in exchange, even up for Clevenger. Uh, Fred, that could be, you know, I guess, reflection on him, but it also could be a reflection that they needed help in their bullpen. Usually don't give up on uh, young pitchers with good arms. One and two on Kim. And There's down and away, good eye. There's the changeup. Jacob DeGrom of the Indians. Yeah, but when you have hair like that, you better be good. Well, DeGrom is also from Florida. Maybe it's a Floridian thing. Well, your hair <laughs> you does better grow. be good. Well, no, yeah, you better be good, and your hair does grow better in warm weather. And it's usually yeah. warm in Florida, even though it comes from 
Jacksonville. You get a little bit cooler there in the winter. Kim fights it off to stay alive. 6 4 2 10. He was 5 0 in Triple A, and that earned the promotion. And at seven starts, he pitched to an ERA of 3.03. Well, you kind of like that if, uh, you know, in the Indian organization, you, you know, minor league pitcher of the year, or at least organizational pitcher of the year, and then you earn your way to the big leagues. That's what you want to do as a organization. You want to get first how, many, Adam. how many times have we seen over the course of this now soon to be nine game road trip and the Orioles don't run pitchers thrown over just because it's the thing you do not because they run. Two two to Kim is swung on and missed he got him. High fastball couldn't catch up to it. Well that's what he does best and as we mentioned uh, you, know, you got to trust your stuff he threw a change up early in the count missed. So right here out of the zone Kim usually doesn't chase that. But that tells me that might he might have a little deception. And 92 doesn't always mean it's 92. If you hide the ball well, or you have late life, or you have all those things, got a chance to have a little bit of success. Here's Manny Machado who is heating up again. Batting average up to 3.23. He's got a five-game hitting streak going. He's got a six game hitting streak going. Jumps on the first pitch. So the Orioles closing out this nine game road trip today. Let's go inside our Jeep inside the numbers, Jim, and uh, hear the differences in the three wins versus the five losses. And, and those numbers are not always the same, but in your wins, you usually score, I don't know if it's going to be six runs, but you're going to score more runs, obviously, than when you lose. But I think the important thing. Is you know again when you look at ERA, they were, the Orioles are would like to be, think they're better than having a th five point ERA, 5.1, and because it's 3.86 on the year. And then again, look at the the one thing that's really out of kilter there for a team, even though they've had to change positions and move people around, are the ten errors. Ten errors in five games. And here is Chris Davis. Chance to give the Orioles an early lead and down and in. Yeah, and I'm not sure any of those errors actually cost them games. I mean, yesterday was the Alvarez error in the first inning. The Baldo Jimenez ends up giving up four runs. Yeah. I'm not sure it would have made a difference, but it certainly uh, gave them a couple of runs on that play. They might have gotten one, but they got two, and then they'd add a couple more runs in the first inning. I don't know if you concur with me, but they were kind of a, it was a bizarre game yesterday. You know, they had probably now the Carrasco is hurt. They had Salazar, their best pitcher on the mound, even though they had do have former Cy Young Award winner Corey Kluber. But the Orioles would get a lot of doubles, but the game wasn't close enough to really feel like you're in it. Well, the Orioles very uncharacteristic on this trip. With 11 errors total. When the trip began a week ago, Friday in Anaheim, the Orioles were second in the league in team fielding, where they normally are at the top. And now they're 11th. 11th out of 15 on one trip. Yeah, but we know they're a better defensive team than that. And, uh, and they, a lot of things, and, and we'll talk about this over the course of the game, is why Buck Showalter's had to move people around. That'll be back in the crowd out of play. So they let him swing three and oh he gets his fastball but gives you once again an idea that Clevenger's best pitch is his fastball. Now he may use the other ones and he may get people out. But at the end of the day he'll find the best pitcher best pitch in baseball when you have a good fastball is the fastball. He just got away one three and oh to a pretty good hitter. First and second one down. And he walked him, so the bases are loaded. Two walks in the inning. Yeah, I think he wanted that pitch. Thought he might have gotten the inside corner. Chris Davis says, I don't want to have anything to do. I'm looking out over the plate, so he takes it. And Adrian Johnson doesn't call it. In his first two major league starts, 
right handers did better against this right hander than left handers. Lefties batted just 167, 4 for 24. Right handers 421, 8 for 19. Another hot Oriole. You can see 5 for 8, home run, two doubles. Just missed a home run, deep center field yesterday. And he's looking to get a ball in the air. That's what he does best. A big chance here for the O's and Mark Trumbo. You mentioned it, Jim. He is certainly heating up. Well, you can take a look right there. I mean, there's a, the double, uh, and then he just—I mean—he smoked doubles. I mean, he hit the home run on Friday night. Huge home run. Or runs five and six. The Orioles would hang on to win that game, six to four. Trumbo's got a four-game hitting streak working. With a couple of home runs in the streak. And a good take for ball two. Yeah, he's not going to get any close pitches. And he's going to be frustrated because he's not anywhere close to the glove. Yeah, we're riding out on the bus, and you know, again, it was a 10 o'clock bus for this one o'clock game. And I said, you may be one of the best high ball hitters I've ever seen. And he goes, that's because my dad threw me a lot of high fastballs in the backyard when I was growing up, because he can backspin the ball with the best of them. Bounce it back the other way, two and one. I said, yeah, I don't, and that was a perfect example. I said, I don't get, he haven't really seen you yet, because we didn't see him for a whole season, you know, really golf the ball. In other words, hit the low ball. He said, well, I can do it, but he said, I, you know, I agree. I'm a better high ball hitter. But his approach is from above down. I mean, he's got one of those swings that allows him, that's why the ball goes so. He's big, strong, and, and he backspins balls, and they just keep going. They can carry with the best of them. Oh, almost hit him ball three. Well, just imagine. I mean, you're, you're Michael Clevenger. You've watched this ball club hit. Even yesterday, even though they got beat 11 to four, but you know, you know, they got a, their first off of Santana. I mean, the uh, Salazar. They were uh, what, six hits, five doubles. They hit the ball all over the place. Problem was, it was seven to nothing when that happened. Big pitch here for Clevenger. Line down the right field line towards the corner towards the pole that is a foul ball just did go foul. You know and he almost has to throw Mark Trumbull a fastball here because in this situation really hasn't thrown anything over yet. You know he's not like a veteran pitcher this is his third major league start you know ideally you'd like to throw him a low and away slider he's got that in his repertoire. Well, I may fall off my chair if he throws that pitch <laughs> other than the fastball and I'm sure Mark will probably go right with me. And then of course if he hangs it it's a it could be a grand salami. So what can I throw and you know sometimes you just have to hope you, you get lucky. Payoff pitch coming to Trumbo with the bases loaded and one down. Slow roller towards third and that'll stay foul. The Trumbo battling here. The good pitches Clevenger has thrown he's fouled off. About to see the seventh pitch in this at bat. Well, he's already pitch counts at 23. This would be big to get a crooked number inning before Tillman takes them out. Big, big chance with the two walks in the base hit. Bases loaded, one down. That ball's ripped to left field. Back out of Ramirez. It is over his head and against the wall. Jones will score. Machado will score. The ball deflected towards right center field. Davis is being sent. The relay throw is dropped, and it's a three run double for Mark Trumbo. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Uh, they're talking. I mean, the ball sits so hard, everybody kind of freezes, including Ramirez in left field. And Bobby Dickerson, the third base coach, I mean, he's way down the line, and yet, you know, what he why he sends everybody is because of arm strength. This ball is just a missile off the wall. And we've seen Ramirez actually make a couple good plays. Look at the care. So now all of a sudden, it goes to Raji Davis. You know, he doesn't have a lot of arm strength, and but you were right about if Lindor catches the ball, it's going to be bang, bang at home plate. Chris Davis scores all the way around, but he drops it, and it was a pretty good throw. It's just I think he was in a hurry, young shortstop, and the Orioles, as you mentioned, they put the crooked number up, and the inning's not over. Otero getting loose here in the first inning. Mickey Callaway out for a visit. Yeah, I think if you're Terry Francona, you send your pitching coach out and say, okay, get out of this inning. You know, maybe because you have first base open, 
even though Weeders has been hot, who's going to step to the plate, use all your pitches. I mean, you've got to get back to where he's, he's pretty much been throwing because of lack of command. Try to get us out of here, and if not, he's not telling him this, you're going to the veteran, Otero in the bullpen, who can pitch multiple innings. He may, he may give you two innings, and then I think Terry Francona is very aware that they have a nice offense, so they want to try to keep it where it is and then try to come back. Now Matt Weeders, who's been hot, Trumbo three RBIs. He now has 37, which is tops on the club. Up and away, one to know. And here's another hot hitter in the Orioles lineup, Matt Weeders. Well, again, you know, he's hit an eight straight. Uh, you know, the home run to win the game Saturday night. He's slicing it, he's pulling it. You pitch him away. Salazar, there's one of the five doubles the Orioles hit off of him yesterday. You know, if you speed up the bat with an all off speed pitch, you know, Matt's just seeing the ball well. He's playing. I mean, you know, he's back to being Matt Weeders in the sense that he's playing pretty much every day. 110 miles an hour off the bat of Trumbo. Well, like I said, it's a missile. <laughs> well, it's a perfect example of what he does. I mean, he didn't hook that ball. A lot of times you'll top spin a ball. He just kind of I mean, backspin it right off the wall. Pops up Weeders. Lindor and Uribe. Lindor calls off Uribe and he's got it for the out and there's two away. Boy you'd love to get another base hit here. Not always easy but you'd love to get as many as you can. A big out for Clevenger. And here's Jonathan Scope. Who's had a real good road trip. He's hitting two in a row. And he has 11 hits on the trip. 11 for 33 on the trip. Well, the big hit was uh, the the uh, two out single up the middle on Friday night off of Bauer. Just a little ground ball, but it found a hole in the center field. You'd like to do that right now. There's a slider. Yeah, you know, when you're young and you know you you, you 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 have your pitchers meeting with the catcher and your pitching coach and you how do you want to pitch people, but. Nothing like being out there. And this is again is only his third major league start against a very good hitting team. Especially a very good hitting team if you can't throw your secondary pitches over. Yeah, they feast on fastballs and they feast on mediocre pitching. Or hitters counts. We hitters saw that counts. with Trumbo. I mean, there was no way that he was looking for anything but the fastball because Clevenger has Really, only thrown one breaking ball for a strike. Checks a swing on the changeup, it looked like. Now two and one on Jonathan. And when you come up uh, for the first time, you really rely. You rely on Jan Gomes, your catcher, you rely on the scouting reports, because you really don't know who you are at this level, because this is the first time you've really experienced it. Now two and one on scope. Pulled foul with authority back in the stands. Orioles are three and three in rubber games on the year. This is a big game for the O's. They'd like to get two out of three, so on the trip, they would have won two of the three series. Of course, uh, you never like to get swept, but they did get swept in Houston. Well, it wasn't like they got blown out of the ballpark. You know, they lost them, but they were tough losses. And I think it's a lot easier to move on from those type of losses. Here's the 2 2 to scope. Swinging a bouncer to third, tried to pull a breaking ball, and Uribe will get it to first for the out, and Clevenger wakes out of it. But big, big inning for the Orioles as Mark Trumbo doubles off the wall with the bases loaded. The Orioles give Tillman an early 3 0 lead.
Pirates with a 3 0 lead on two hits and a couple of walks. You can look at the Indians lineup for today Santana, Kipnis, and Lindor with Napoli, Ramirez, and Uribe. Uribe having a pretty good series, three out of eight, including a home run. Gomes, Bird, and Rajay Davis for the try. Uh, Chris Tillman they present him with a three nothing lead a lot of fast balls two seamer four seamers slider curve ball those are the breaking balls slider being used much much more in 2016 because it's better and then uh, change up when he needs it so less hits than innings pitch strikeout per inning which is way up from last year and again you know great numbers righties and lefties and it keeps the ball in the ballpark as you mentioned or I mentioned that the last game was only one changeup. Mm -hmm. That's for two run home run. Luis Valbuena, and he would get a no decision. Other than that, pitched very well down in Houston. Yeah, he allowed only three base hits in that seven inning effort. And he gets ahead of Carlos Santana, who's playing at first base today. Well, Tilly's bad at worst inning, and his ERA is over five runs a game, is the first. So again, we always talk about shutdown innings. He'd certainly like to do that. Breaking ball misses outside. There's your number one for 11. And a foul back. Yeah, and you know, I, I've been where you kind of, you know, people say, well, you own Santana because he's one for 11. But I don't think you ever really think that. You just. What you try to do if you're an experienced pitcher like Chris, you go, okay, why is that? I make good pitches. Does he not maybe not see the ball? Do I move it around? You know, he's just, you've talked about Jim, very disciplined hitter. That's why he's leading off. So you you know you figure, okay, I'll try to get ahead, and then if I get behind him, all of a sudden that one for eleven number probably changes. I thought it was interesting that Terry Francona, who manages the Indians, said, well. I think on base percentage is the most important thing for, for a leadoff hitter, and that's why Santana, who the last two years over 100 walks, is leading off. High fly ball to right. Back on it is Rymel. That ball is a mile high, and Nolan has it for the out and one away. Take a look at the uh, defense for the Orioles, and uh, you know, Kim Jones and Rymel. So every day it seems like it's a little bit different. Joey Rickard plays a lot. Flaherty back in the lineup, trying to get hot with the bat. Machado, Scope, Davis, and then Matt Weeters. We've seen catching a lot. Jason Kipnis batting second. 271 on the year. Strike one. So the first two hitters, he gets ahead. Yeah, and 89 goes to 92. And, you know, there are a lot of uh, other than maybe the the opening day, which was a kind of a, only two innings. He's thrown 95 in the first inning against the Twins. Usually, it takes a couple of innings for Chris Tillman to get to max velocity. It's almost like he's become a little bit like Justin Verlander, which is not a bad thing. <laughs> not at all. And he's on his game. Now the one major difference in Chris this year is the strikeouts are up for his career he has averaged just under seven per nine innings but this year he's at about one per inning 8.89 he had 58 K's and 58 and two thirds innings coming in the slider change up bounce towards scope waits on the hop and throws out Kipnis and two down here in the Oriole first. Fans coming out tomorrow and celebrate Memorial Day. The birds are back home to take on the Red Sox at 135. And if you come out, all fans receive an Orioles Memorial Day T-shirt. So we'll kick off the unofficial start of summer by honoring our nation's heroes and enjoying a great afternoon with family and friends at Camden Yards. The good seats still remain, but they're going fast. Showdown for first place this week. Reserve your tickets now, Orioles.com, or call 888-848-BIRD. Forward to getting back home in daytime baseball at Camden Yards. Here's Lindor. Breaking ball is low. Lindor, two out of seven in the series, batting at 317. One of the real good young shortstops in the league. He's having a nice May, wouldn't you say? 35 hits. Fourth time he's done that. And 
And his career is only like seven months. <laughs> he came up. I mean, really, I mean, he came up, uh, you know, halfway through last year, second to Correa and Rookie of the Year. Switch hitter. Where is that left-handed pitching? We've seen him here. I mean, he's hit balls to the left. He's hit sacrifice flies. He's hit home runs. Contact hitter. Tough to strike out. Towards the right field corner. Rymold on the run, and he gets there and runs it down. So Chris Tillman, after his team gives him a lead, has a three up, three down, bottom of the first. of the game Joe Reichel of Northeast has won five hundred dollars for being selected and will win five hundred dollars more for every Orioles home run hit today. You can play home run riches scratch offs and win up to fifty thousand dollars or enter non winning tickets for a chance to be the contestant of the game. Visit mdlottery.com slash baseball. More O's fans in Cleveland for this day. Well you all have to do listen to the national anthem and you hear the O and you can kind of get a barometer how many are here. How cute was the national anthem oh. today? Where they, I believe they were a group of kindergartners. Levenger, 32 pitches to get through that first inning. He faced seven batters. Rymel, Flaherty, and Jones in the second. And a strike at the knees on one. Again, you have to understand uh, Michael Clevenger was the fourth rounder, so that means he has a good arm. He had, did have Tommy John surgery. So that might also mean when you try to come back from that, it takes you a couple of years. That could have been part of the trade. But, you know, Sterling numbers last year. There's the hook. And that's a good one. Really good one. Yeah, four pitch pitcher. So we saw the change up in the first. We saw a slider to Jonathan Scope. We didn't see this pitch. 20 miles per hour slower than his fastball. And there's the slider. Wow. Gome, Gome study at strike three. <laughs> well, I, I think everybody he got did, everything but the call. Including Nolan Rymo. Remember the other night when uh, Jonesy headed for the dugout and it wasn't strike three? Well, you take a look here. I mean, that's just. I mean, the only person that didn't think it was a strike was Adrian Johnson, the home plate umpire. Rymel pops it up behind the plate. Jan Gomes is there and he puts it away for the out. One away here in the Orioles second. Catch everything all season long by following Masset Orioles on Twitter. Check out highlights of the game, go behind the scenes and enter to win exclusive prizes. That's at Masset Orioles on Twitter. I mean, that's only one pitch for the home plate number, Adrian Dunn, but that's scary. If I was a hitter or a pitcher, when you see that pitch that was about as good as you could throw it, you got to go. Oh, what is going to be a strike or a ball? Ryan Flaherty batting ninth today. Takes ball one. Now you talked about uh, Jacob Degrom. Now Degrom is about what 95 to 97. So similar here, <laughs> stuff wise. <laughs> even though he does, I mean, we've already seen him. He's he's got a nice little mix of pitches. 
And a base hit to center field for Ryan Flaherty. He well, breaks he his 0 for 12 with a base hit with one down. Well, you know, it's funny. Uh, yesterday, he's coming up out the field. He didn't pl play, and you can see the big smile. He had two line drives. So, you know, we call him, uh, my wife calls him a little puppy, and, and now Trumbo's calling him that because, you know, he comes up. He's such a good, nice kid and all that. And Trumbo just looked at him. He goes, well, well, what do you want? You hit two rockets to center. And I said, just get jammed. Hit a ground ball somewhere. And he just, of course, laughs. And. So he's very happy because when he hits he gets to play and he can help you win games because of his defense. So Flaherty gets on for Jones. And a swing and a miss on one our PNC inside the numbers. Three of four first batters scored in game one and three. So that's a good trend. Orioles won game one and looking to win game three. Adam walked and scored in the first. And I'll take ball one. What was that again? Oh. Yeah, he, he walked, walked and scored. And walked. Him. Hey, he's walked 13 times yeah. already. Well, you know, it's funny with Adam. He, he doesn't walk. They walk him because he's up there swinging. I mean, it's just his M.O. It certainly works. A couple of points considering his whole average of a 280 lifetime hitter with power. Good change up there. He leaves Earth. Big, big, big swing. It's a term that actually, uh, you know, Toby Hara, who played, played shortstop for the Indians in the old ballpark. Every time we used to call it, he would leave Earth or the helicopter because 2 and 0, the stance would change, front foot would open up because he would look for a ball that he could leave Earth on or hit home runs. Very rarely ever took a 2 0 pitch. Didn't matter where it was. And he got him. Back to back off speed pitches. Yeah, you know, uh, Michael Clevenger, and you know, ever since uh, Mickey Calloway went out there and said, I'll use all your pitches, and now he's a little more comfortable here in the second inning, you're seeing a four pitch pitcher. First inning couldn't command his fastball, pretty much that's what he went with, and the Orioles made him pay for it. Yoon Soo Kim for his second at bat, he struck out his first at bat. Has played his way into the lineup. Ball one too tight. Kim six for 16 on the trip. Flaherty at first two down draws a throw. Maybe Clevenger. Is checking the runners because in his first two starts he allowed three stolen bases. That's quite a bit. Two starts. Well, but who was he playing against? White Sox. Last Monday he lost at Chicago. And then his major league debut was in Cincinnati. Maybe, well, one of the Billy Hamilton got him. Yeah, well, you're right. And one of the more important things when you pitch is to you, you need to really. I mean, part of your homework is who runs, who doesn't. Does the team in general run? Do they have anybody that will steal a base, depending on the situation? The Orioles just don't have a lot of those anymore. One I was outside, Kim takes. And Billy Hamilton had one in the start in Cincinnati. That was his major league debut. Here's the 2 0 to Kim outside ball three. And in his lost Monday in Chicago, Brett Laurie had a steal. Todd Frazier had a steal. Wow. Yeah, and both of those guys, Frazier had a two run home run off him, and then Laurie had a three run home run. And when they weren't hitting home runs, they were stealing bases. There's a four pitch walk third walk in the game and the Orioles have two on with two down for red hot Manny Machado. 
Clevenger really battling his command here. Yeah, and you know he didn't want to walk him to get to Machado. If he's been paying attention, he's hot as Manny's been. Well, Manny's getting it done, Jim, in particular with the extra base hits. Well, take a look right here. You think this ball is out? It would have been out in Camden Yards, but a high wall, 19 foot ball. Ramirez plays it off. He would double up the gap in right center field. Like yesterday, another screamer off the wall. I mean, he, he hits the ball with a gap power, which turns into home run power in a lot of parks, as well as anybody. There's a little slider. Montero is up for a second time. Yeah, I think short leash by Terry Francona only because this is an important game for both teams. They've been playing well. The Orioles, of course, want to win. Want to win two out of three, as do, do the Indians. Well, Cleveland, with its win yesterday over the Orioles, took over first place in the AL Central. And they have the fewest wins in the Central. They're now 26 and 21. Kansas City's 26 and 22. They're a halfback. Chicago's 27 and 23. They're a halfback. How about the uh, the Royals scoring seven and into the last inning in Kansas City? White Sox were up seven to one with Robertson, their closer, they ended up losing. What a White Sox have lost five in a row to lose the top spot in the division. Yeah, and the Indians beat him what three out of four when they were on the road so. And look at Detroit Jim they've won seven of ten and they're back at 500 they're only two and a half out. So that division is very tight as is the East. Two and one on Manny two on and two down. Hard hit ball foul. Yeah you just don't get I mean that little cutter. Gets it up in, in the zone and. You know, he rips it foul, but Manny's at the point over this weekend that you just have to make your pitches. And if you don't, you got to be lucky because he's going to hit the ball hard somewhere. You know, we saw Salazar strike him out on a what a hanging changeup. They kind of both smiled at each other because he probably got away with it. But you, you really have to change speeds, and you can see no command yet for Michael Clevenger. The two-two is low ball three. It's blocked by Gomes to keep it in front. Yankees are in Tampa again, scoreless in the third. Boston at Toronto, scoreless in the second. It's R.A. Dickey against David Price in that game. Red Sox are at Camden Yards tomorrow to begin a four game series. Tyler Wilson against Stephen Wright, the knuckleball. Runners will be off with the pitch. Flaherty from second and Kim from first. Three and two on Machado with two men down. And the payoff is swung on a pop foul back of the plate and they'll do it again. Well he just threw him a three run home run slider and he had a big swing and fouled it off. So again at least he's going to use all his pitches. And we got a little bit fortunate there. So Manny about to see the seventh pitch in this at bat. A lot of deep counts. A high pitch count at bats for Clevin. Runners go and the 3 2 is swung on and lifted foul down the line. And that's going to fade back out of play. And then he'll do it again. Machado, five, six game hitting streak now. He is nine for 18. With a home run and three RBIs. Looking for his 20th multi hit game after his first inning single. Chris Davis. Looming large on deck. Yeah, the problem if you pitch around Manny, he may not be facing him. That's one of the problems for Michael Clevenger. He keeps trying to throw the slider. Runners go on the eighth pitch to Machado, swinging a foul off his foot. Yeah, we don't like that. That's the way J.J. Hardy got hurt. Hasn't played since the end of April. He's got the protection, but you can see it. It hit. Almost the underside of his foot. Well, Joe Walter reported today that JJ is doing well in Sarasota. And a lot of the work in the water. 
Shaw from Mexico. JJ is watching. Hi, JJ. Yeah, off of Mexico. Probably has a good tan. <laughs> the Orioles need him back. Ninth pitch coming here to Machado. The runners go. And a uh, swing and a miss. He got him. Clevenger with a big, big out. So the Orioles strand two. Mid second in Cleveland. Three nothing birds. of games but from second inning on he has not had a challenge very much at all here are the lowest ERAs in the American League from the second inning on Rich Hill 1.7 Stephen Wright 1.74 we will see him tomorrow and then there's Tillman 2.03 this game here the fourth consecutive game he did not allow a run in the first inning yeah, he wasn't really happy I mean we talk about the, the game down in Houston and we only really what a seventh inning high change up to Valbuena and had a one nothing lead at that point so as you mentioned lack of run support but he, he just didn't like the wind up through some balls you know, maybe three feet wide of home plate. He's a good self grader and, you know not easily satisfied and that's a good thing to have with anybody you know, in any walk of life. Strike one to Mike Napoli Ramirez and Uribe will follow. One and one. There are a lot of at bats because of his, you know, playing with the Red Sox 27 times up, seven hits. See, those are the balls that he just kind of pulls off the plate. So he kind of gets to a point where he's going, I said, What does that feel like? I mean, he missed by what, three, four feet? And he said, he said I just get ready to go, and then all of a sudden, it just go left. Pulled foul, two and two. Well, Tillman with the run support. The Orioles, well, they didn't get any runs in his first start because he only pitched two innings. That was opening day against Minnesota. They've scored one run for him in two separate starts, two runs in a start, and three runs in a start. So the three runs today is, let's celebrate. As he misses outside with an off speed pitch for ball three. And then one big game like last year. I mean, he ends up, what, he was two and seven at one point last year, and then, you know, had a couple of long losing streaks, and then a long winning streak. They got 17 in one game. So that was up in Philadelphia or against Philadelphia. And didn't want to do that. Lead off walk. So the Indians get their first base runner. The Orioles are hosting the AL East rival Yankees in a three game weekend series that begins Friday at Oriole Park. Now, tickets for the Yankees over a weekend go fast, so don't miss out. Plus, for each game, fans are encouraged to bring any non perishable food items or cash donations to benefit the Maryland Food Bank. It's part of the 30th annual Orioles Reach Food and Funds Drive presented by Masson and WJZ TV. For your tickets, Orioles.com or 888 848 Bird. Valdo trying to stay cool on the bench. And there's ball one inside as he pulls another one. 
Jose Ramirez having a good series. See those numbers there. Five out of seven, couple of doubles in RBI. They yeah, almost hit 400 with runners at scoring position. Well, Chris Tillman, I mean, they're almost averaging as a team five runs a game, and they are over five runs a game here in Cleveland. So you better make your pitches. You better get ahead. You better do all the things that good starting pitchers or good pitchers do. And he knows that. That's why he didn't want to walk Napoli. But to his credit, then what I mean, what are the Indians trying to do? They're trying to get back on the board here. Change up evens the count one and one. Comes back with it again. Ramirez frozen there, and it's one and two. And he's, uh, you know, he's been very content going the other way. He doesn't hit a whole lot of home runs. And Mickey Brantley had shoulder surgery. He's one of their best players, so he really hasn't been able to play very much on the DL. Just had to get a cortisone shot, so his timetable really isn't one. And he struck him out with a fastball. So that's pitching, folks. A couple of change-ups. You got a hot hitter. He's trying to look for a ball to, to pull, maybe get a first and third, and then he just buzzes 93. Most velocity of the afternoon. You know, it is the second inning, and then it's perfectly located up and out of the strike zone. First strikeout for Tillman. Here's Juan Uribe, the ageless one. <laughs> Just keeps on going. Strike on the corner. Kirby directing Hyun Soon Kim on virtually every pitch. And a strike at the outside corner. Another good pitch. Yeah, high ball hitter, and he may hit it anywhere. I mean, that's pretty much what he's become. And along with Mike Napoli, he can really give the Indians a veteran. Presence. Love to get a double play ball here. Up and away. And that's the pitch I'm kind of talking about. You know, he throws that pitch and he goes, I, I don't really know why I do it. Is it a mechanical well, I think it's just a rhythm. You know, trying to make a perfect pitch and you're a little bit too quick, or maybe you're even close too much. There's the perfect pitch right outside corner. He is 6'5, and he throws the ball downhill. And when you go talk to hitters the day after he pitches, they said you don't pick the ball up real well. And then you add the fact that he's added that fourth pitch, the slider, on a much more consistent basis. It makes him tougher to hit. And that's why all the numbers. You know the important ones, the ERA, and you know, of course the strikeouts have gone up, walks have come down. Old foul, and then you luck out on those kind of pitches. He hangs a changeup, didn't want to throw it there, and Uribe just out in front. Ball's clubbed. Look how quick he'll get. So he's trying to throw it down away, and it's really pretty much ends up in the middle of the plate. Another one two pitch to Uribe. Napoli not a base stealing threat on a first base. Double play ball. Manny to scope. Back to first and a double play. And that gets Tillman out of the inning. The 6 4 3 erases the leadoff walk, and the Indians go down in the second. Tillman in command. The O's have a 3 0 lead.
you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in today's game brought to you by Miller Lite. Cleveland Ohio inside progressive field nice ballpark to watch a game. Orioles with three in the first trying to get this series win the rubber game. Yeah, so 28 pitches uh, that's the average but 34 in the first came down a little bit. Well you saw and you know, I'm, I'm sure Mickey Calloway their pitching coach and also Jerry Francona their skipper had to say OK maybe we saw a little bit more of the guy that was five and oh that used all his pitches. I mean made a great pitch uh, to get Manny Machado out on strikes also great curveball. I mean he struck Jonesy out on a curveball threw a good breaking ball to Nolan Rimmel. It's a little different view than we saw in the first inning. Here's Chris Davis cued towards third base Uribe off balance throw but he got it. So Davis on one pitch is retired one out here in the third fans visit Orioles.com slash vote orange now and vote for the 2016 All Star game if you vote at least five times and select the O's as your favorite team you'll be entered to win an All Star game jersey signed by the Orioles All Stars. And if you vote at least 20 times and select the O's, you'll receive a promo code for a buy one get one ticket offer for any game in July in the series against the Rockies in that July series, the three games. So vote early, vote often, vote orange. Visit Orioles.com slash vote orange today. It's not a bad deal. You can vote for the All-Stars and you can get a ticket to see Interleague Baseball against the Rockies. Buy one, get one. It's a good deal. Any Machado. And the O's trying to get this game. Go home to open the series against Boston on a high note. Yeah, a little different look the second time through the order. I mean, he throws Chris Davis a low and away change up, and Chris hits a little infield hit. Rebe playing at least positioned himself well enough, even with a shift, that he could throw him out. So he, he got the Orioles to swing at his pitch early in the count. Sharply hit to your Rebe. Gobbles it up. And there's another little nice little breaking ball after Trumbo hits the uh, three run double on a fastball. And our Maryland Live Casino inside the numbers, Matt Wieters, highest batting average any month in his career. He loves May, 355, loves September a little more. <laughs> but he is certainly uh, having a good end to the month of May. Well, that's an amazing number to be hitting 362 if you're a catcher in September. Consider the wear and tear factor tells you, I mean, you know, that Buck Showalter makes sure that kind of talked about it with Zach Britton. If you're a bullpenner, you know that he's going to use you, but he's certainly going to be cognizant and aware of, you know, not overusing you. And the Orioles, I mean, they've had a nice combination in the last couple of years because of the Tommy John and injuries. It's been Caleb Joseph with Steve Clevenger for a little bit of while, one year. Steve down with the Mariners. Then again, if you're going to catch and you can hit 362 in the month of September, you got it going on. It rolls off it and fouls it off. Another good changeup. Looks like he changed the identity from the first inning to the third here. Now he's pitching. Two outs, none on. And he got him on a high fastball. Now that is strikeout number four for Clevenger in the first time in this game. The Orioles go three up, three down. Mid third with the birds in front.
brought to you by Hair Cuttery, home of the Smile Back Guarantee. No small print, just big smiles. Those fans smiling at Progressive Field. Three nothing game. Met a couple at the hotel last night. They said they planned their weekend. Drove in from Baltimore to see the Orioles and do a little pit stop at the, at the uh, Football Hall of Fame in Canton and then head back to Baltimore. They got to the game yesterday to see the Orioles on the road. A lot of fans do that. They plan weekends and go on the road to see the Orioles. As the Orioles are relevant in the division. More and more fans are doing that. Here's Gomes to lead off. Bird and Davis will follow. Our league leaders brought to you by Coons.com. Over two million vehicles sold and counted. Well, there you go. And uh, you know, the Indians, they have a I mean, terrific offense. I mean, you're averaging almost five runs a game in, at home, over five. And you're doing some hitting. And as we mentioned, there's Brandley, and there's a nice change of pass ball count. But you know, they miss Brandley, but what Ramirez doesn't have the kind of power that he can bring, but he's, you know, playing it out. You know, he put an, an infielder in the outfield. And, all of a sudden, he's almost hit 400 with runners in scoring position, and hopefully, Michael Brantley will come back before the year is over. Gomes may have swung at ball two, so it's a ball of two strikes on the Indians catcher. Well, he's been struggling uh, at least average-wise, but he's hitting 375 with runners in scoring position, and we saw that approach yesterday. His hits were to right field on almost every swing he took. Again, they scored 11 runs. Was in, you know stay inside the ball. But he also is one of those guys with a little bit of power if you make a mistake. Gomes was born in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and then grew up in Miami. He is in his fifth season and his fourth with the Indians. After one year with the Blue Jays, the Jays traded him to Cleveland. Gomes battling here. He's already fouled off a couple, about to see the sixth pitch against Chris Tillman. Orioles have a 10 game homestand coming up beginning tomorrow, and the first seven are back in the division four with Boston and three with the Yankees. And the changeup fouled off. And then Kansas City comes to town, and, and the O's head back out on the road to Toronto and Boston. So, we got a tough stretch. Four of the next five series will be within the division. Hey, you always look at these the schedules and you go, well, yeah, it's a tough schedule. And of course, if you're playing well, you say, well, we're, we're looking forward to it. And that's what that's why today's game is so important. Tillman's won six out of seven games. Manny at short. And guns it across to get the hustling Gomes for yeah, the first out. You can see again uh, this team and Gomes is not the fastest runner, but they're Gary Francona's got him playing. All cylinders are firing. That's a pretty routine ground ball, but if you bobble it or whatever, and a guy runs the ball out, all of a sudden it's not routine anymore. Brad Mills to the right, Terry on the left. Five of the next six series for the Orioles will be within the division. So it is a, a very tough stretch coming up. That takes them to the third week of June. Before they see their first interleague of the year. This ball's hit the center field right at Adam Jones. Yeah, Marlon Bird says I, I wait all weekend. I come up, I hit a line drive. That's kind of first pitch. Yeah, a little slider. That's the first one he's thrown all afternoon. And I hit it right at the center field. That's not the way I planned it. He was out. I mean, he took a lot of extra hitting. Another veteran that has done a nice job for him when called on. Yeah, when he signed here, I'm not sure he signed here thinking he was going to be a backup. But because of the other personnel, he has been coming off the bench. Spot starts. Here's Davis, the number nine batter. Rajay is a hit in each game in the series. Breaking ball is low. Rajay Davis out of Connecticut. New London Connecticut. He was a 38th round draft pick out of college by the Pirates. Real good changeup. 
Well, he's made himself into a good player, and uh, you know he's always been able to. I mean, especially against lefties, and he's kind of a, uh, a speedier version of Delman Young. Of course, he hasn't had that kind of opportunity to play in postseason like Delman did. You know, base stealer. It's a really good curveball. The Indians are his sixth organization. Pittsburgh and San Francisco in the National League. Then he went to Oakland. Oakland traded him to Toronto. He went to Detroit and now in Cleveland. Spent the last two years with the Tigers. And two and two on Rajay Davis. Up there with the sunglasses on and a lot of glare today. The sun is behind the clouds. A lot of overcast in Cleveland. Three. It was another one of those pitches you were talking about. Yeah, maybe a little closer than some of them, but it's also the, the ball with the most velocity. Big guy. A lot of stuff goes on when you're. You know, I could say I'm not going to walk guys when they get me a three-run lead, but invariably sometimes you do, and you just try to battle your way through it. It's like it might be a change up three and two. It's. And it was one. You know, it may be a case where you go, okay, three nothing. Why would I go with a changeup today? And again, it's only the third inning. That might be what Weeders and what Tillman think are their best pitches. So you throw it. Here's David Wallace. He said, why can't we just have about a 12 pitch <laughs> inning? There's another, another foul ball. Yeah. Oh, this is suddenly turned into an eight pitch at bat. Well, he's making good pitches, and to their credit, Ty Van Ber Berkeley, the hitting instructor, so he's you know he's been here a couple of years. If you strike out, the inning's over, or your at bat's over. If you make contact with his speed, anything can happen. And he got him. Foul tip held by Weeders. So Tillman picks up a second strikeout and has his second three up, three down inning. Tillman in command as we head to the fourth. Brought to you by the RAV4 Hybrid. All wheel drive and unexpected performance. Visit buyatoyota.com. Here's Jim Tommy. All 600, what, 8, 9, 7, I don't know, he had over 600 home runs. He looks good in bronze. Yes. It's a nice look. I remember when he came up, Charlie Manuel was a hitting instructor, would eventually become the manager. He said, he had him at Triple A down in I think at Charlotte. He, he said, won the Triple Crown. At right, AAA. He, goes, he said it was like a man playing with the boys. Jonathan Scope leads off for the O's. Now Clevenger, boy, did he settle down. Eight pitch third inning. Now a lot of good pitches, and you can see what 34 in the first. Something like. 
fifty three going into the third inning so that's that's how you settle down. You know after the Indians you want to have obviously good starting pitching they normally have the last couple of years they've led the American League in strikeouts. You know, two years ago I mean last year they were one but. Now we're getting back to the way they pitched in Houston. You know, big curve balls and nice little cutters and good enough fastball to make you respect it. One and two on scope. And tried the same pitch, but that one well outside. Well, you make a good point about his windup, and you know, you have a lot of nervous and you know energy or you know, I don't know if you're nervous but it's kind of apprehension. But it's pretty simple. I mean he, he's going to eventually get right to there over his knee. And I mean that's the way they were when I came up and Zach Britton was talking about it you know, probably about 10 or 15 minutes about how when he came up through the minor leagues he said everywhere he went I mean it was very right there. I mean you know your, your hands come up they separate it's a great guideline. And the way he pitched. There's the big curveball, and you know, it's just easier to have rhythm. You know, when the blade comes up, your arm actually gets to swing back, and then you get the throw downhill. He must be a good dancer. Yeah, because that, he's got rhythm? Well, yeah, well, all that toe tapping for the rhythm. Well, you see, you know, some of the, I mean, Dwight Evans, you know, you know played with the Orioles, but most of the, with the Red Sox, that's how he hit the toe tap. Hangs a curveball, and Jonathan doesn't miss it. Well, that one into the corner and scope is going to hustle the second base he's got a lead off double so scope stays hot. He's now hitting three in a row that's his 12th base hit on this road trip. Well he'll find talking about Michael Clevenger especially with Jonathan scope if you throw him a great curveball then you throw him a bad one and that's what the hanger is that you talked about. He's going to hit it hard. They always get base hits on that we've seen that over the course of the season and seasons past. But he's become a very very good breaking ball. Well, the Rymold now with a chance for an RBI. You better take a shot to right here because you want to add runs. Inside with a fastball, one and zero. Oh. So one thing about the Indians, uh, you know, both nights they you can see, and this is why again they're one of the best offensive teams in the American League, is that they are trying to move runners. And Nolan's got to try to do that here. Until you get to two strikes, shoot a ball to right field. Inside again for ball two. Not always easy to do, but it's something you always, you know, you go to spring training. What are they talking about? Situational hitting. These are one of those situations. Breaking ball for a strike. Well, even during batting practice on a daily basis during the rounds. At least three, sometimes four players in a group. Scott Kubal will yell out situations to them. Man on second, get him over. First and second. Infield's in, man at third, and to try to get them thinking about situations. Tried to go to right field there, but the pitcher sailing outside, two and two. Now the other part of the equation is now you have a pitcher that doesn't want to allow you to do that. I remember my first rookie year pitching a spring training game against the the, the Cardinals and Dick Road was a very good second baseman shortstop for the Cardinals and he was one of the notorious right field hitters. And he would just keep his hands inside the ball. It didn't matter if he threw 98. He just could do that. All three. So Scope had a seven pitch at bat after Clevenger retired the side three of three down on eight pitches in the third. And now Rymold is having an extended at bat. So this will be the sixth pitch to Rymold here on the 3 2. With Flaherty on deck. Fouled off down the right side. Yeah, the whole inning changes when you give up a leadoff double, especially when you're down by three. You know, you got to feel that you got to be perfect. 
what we mentioned the, the Indians with a good offense they don't want this game to get out of hand they have a veteran Mormon up for the third time and Dan Otero seventh pitch coming here to Reimold in this at bat center field scope will go back to tag Davis does not have a strong arm Rajay has it there goes scope towards third and the throw comes in the Lindor at second base. So Rymel does his job. He gets the man over. Runner at third and one down. The day after the Orioles win and score five or more runs, you get 50% off regular menu pricing online orders at PapaJohns.com with the promo code Orioles5. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. It's Ryan Flaherty who broke his. 0 for 12 with a second inning single chance for an RBI he does not have an RBI on the year even though he is what three for nine can be three for nine with runners in scoring position he must hit it too hard and people yeah. don't score runner at second and yeah. they're held fly ball this is one of those situational hitting again runner third look for a ball you can get in the air infields in I mean can't hit a line drive by him or a high chopper over your head, which we saw the the Indians do yesterday. Very hard infield here. See the pitches for Clevenger mounting. This will be his 80th pitch of the game. The Orioles haven't scored since the first chance to add a run here. Yeah, I still think that you know, if you're ever going to make some scoring changes that you should give a hitter when he moves the runner from second to third it should be a sacrifice. It used to be but then they changed the rule. Way back. Yeah. You only get the sacrifice fly if the runner scores. Ball three good take. Yeah it's even a better take when you want to drive in a run and you haven't done it. I mean that's. That's part of hitting and, and, and Ryan Flaherty as much as he would like to got Adam Jones waiting on deck. He's had a very good series leading off. So if he wants to walk in. Take the walk. Might end up scoring the fifth run. Got the green light on three and oh and he hits it to left field Ramirez backpedaling should be deep enough. Ramirez has it here comes scope he will easily score. And Ryan Flaherty with that first RBI of the year in a sack fly. And who says the O's can't manufacture a run? There's one right there. Double fly ball, fly ball, and it's 4 nothing O's. Well, situationally, they were good. You know, 3 and 0, Buck Show Walter saying, okay, I, have, I, I trust that you will get a pitch to hit that will allow you to do what we all want you to do. And that's get a ball to the outfield. So scope scores. And of course, your teammates will go. Well, it's about time. I mean, <laughs> it's into June, but you got to be happy about that. If Chris Tillman gets another run to work with. Adam takes low. Well, now you got to feel bad for Caleb. He is the lone player on the team without an RBI. And I'm not counting Paul Yanish because he's only been here for a couple of weeks and he doesn't play a lot. There's Caleb on the bench. I would guess he would start tomorrow with the day game. Although that Weeders might be in there. Adam fouls it off. Well, you know, it's funny. I mean, we, you know, we all joke with Caleb. You know, last year, fourth in the on the team with RBIs because of the injury to Matt Weeders didn't play full time. And you know, of course, you tell him you will drive in a run before the season ends, and he just kind of laughs. But everybody roots for it because he's part of it. I mean, he has a good sense of humor about it. Does a good job. We talked about this when he catches. See, they're right there. They're going. I, hey, I got mine. So he's happy for Ryan Flaherty because he knows it's going to help the team win, and that's what good teams do. Now you think he's over there saying, "Dude, 
You're making me look bad. No, he's going. How did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> now, if I could only get in there and get one. Well, he's probably saying, you know what? Why doesn't Buck let me swing away three and zero? <laughs> three and one on Adam. Hard hit ball foul down the line. Orioles win here today. They would even up their road series record. They are three and four, so they'd go to four and four. And they'd improve to 10, 5, and 1 in their overall series play. And they're heading home for a 10 game homestand where they've got 17 and 8 in their first 25 games. 3 2 is fouled off. Earlier on, it didn't look as if Clevenger would get even this far in the game. There's been bullpen activity in three of the four innings. Seven pitch coming here to Adam. Yeah, softly hit ball to second. Kipnis charges to play the in between hop. And Jones retired for the final out. Orioles get a run on a double, a fly ball, and a fly ball. Mid four and Tillman now with a four nothing lead. All on Madison is brought to you by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. And by Royal Farms, ATMs are surcharge free. Get your cash for nothing. Bank or credit card fees may still apply. There's the pier in Cleveland. So Tillman now with a 4 0 lead. He has faced nine through the first three innings. Only base runner was a leadoff walk in the second. Napoli, who was erased on the double play ball by Uribe. Yeah, Santana just skied one, as you mentioned. I mean, sky high to right on a little bit of a, I think a slider. So on base. Skied that one to right, and that yeah. one's going to go. So the Indians get on the board. It's a 4 to 1 game. Well, you have to make good pitches. And I'm not telling Chris Tillman anything he doesn't know. And when you don't, this is what happens. He walks. If you'll, he'll take a walk if you give it to him. You know, 100 last year, 113 the year before. And then if you throw a change up or just miss the slider in the first, if you get a ball in the middle of the plate, he becomes a leadoff home run hitter, number nine of the year. And all of a sudden, four nothing goes to four and one. I mean, it's just a change up in the middle of the plate. Might be the right pitch, certainly the wrong location. He can hit the ball hard. Switch hitter. Great high ball hitter. Doesn't miss that one. So his ninth home runs gets the Indians on the board. That's their first base hit. And it's low to Kipnis. That is the fourth home run 
Tillman has allowed three of them by left handed batters. Popped up. Shallow left Kim calling. And he's got it for the out one away. Big smile on Kim's face. <laughs> well, that year, I mean, uh, kind of a, a bit of a rise in the, in the anticipation. Oh, yeah, I guess. What that was about. Wayne Kirby has been directing Kim on just about every pitch in this game. And Adam, of course, is a, kind of the co coach out there in center field. It, when Wayne moves Kim, Adam looks at Wayne almost as if he's giving his approval or disapproval from the outfield. 1 0 on Lindor. Outside well, again, ball yeah, for Adam, I mean, it's kind of like when you're on second base, you always kind of look around, see where they're playing, because then you can read the ball off the bat. Same thing applies if you're a center fielder. And, uh, you know, what Rymo, you don't have to worry about it because he can go get him. Kim, not quite as fast, so. Want to know where he is, so you know which gap to cover, and then maybe in a hurry. One thing about Kimmy is very coachable. Meantime, three and zero on Lindor. There's a strike. Three and one. Yeah, Tilly's only given up one hit, but if you're here, you are in the fourth inning, and you're saying, "Well, does he have a? You know, what's his best pitch?" And it's really kind of a mix of all of them. Which is really what he's been about all year long. You can see about this. But he, I don't think he's really on his A game as of yet. And they're looking for base runners and they get another. So the second walk puts one on. The Orioles are back home tomorrow. They begin a four game series with the division rival Red Sox. Now, tomorrow on Memorial Day, it's a matinee game at 135. And then the Orioles and Red Sox battle Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, all night games at 705. So coming out. And paint the ballpark orange, the showdown in first place. For your tickets, Orioles.com or 888 848 Bird. And here is Napoli, a home run threat. Stolen base threat on at first base. And a called strike. I don't know if uh, Chris Tillman read the, uh, the notes, but they've, what, won nine out of 13, and they've averaged 6.6 .6 runs a game. So you know they're a formidable. Offense. You've seen them for two nights. They went one for ten on Friday, yet they still scored four runs. A couple more clutch hits, that game might have changed. So popped up the off-speed pitch back in the crowd. So those are all kind of hittable changes. I mean, that's a change up that's up. Napoli about as good a high ball hitter as there is. I mean, this may be the best groove that Tillman's going to be in, but we've seen him be able to, in mid game, get to another level. So after the walk to Lindor, he's 0 and 2 on Napoli. Keeping Lindor close, Lindor has swiped 10 of 11. Yeah, they run a lot, and they only stole, what, five bases yesterday? Yeah. I mean, of course, really they don't run on Tillman, but. And everybody runs on Jimenez. Yeah, Weeder's uh, caught stealing percentage took a beating yesterday. And five steals in one game. High fly ball to left. He got a lot of that one. Back it goes towards the bleachers, and that ball is gone, and we have a one run game. A two home run inning for the Indians. Well, that's why they got him. This is what he does. The big fly hit one off of right on Friday night on a hanging slider. This was a curveball, and I'm not sure it was a bad pitch because it ended up in the bleachers, but it, you know, maybe a little bit in the middle of the plate, but it was down in the zone, and he just timed it. I mean, inside middle, and he just hits the high fly, and he is strong. I mean, there's talk about an uppercut swing. What did Ted Williams say? Six degrees? That was about 15 when it worked. Tenth home run of the year. And they're back in business. Still only one down, and the walk scores ahead of the home run. So for Napoli, number 10, Santana hit number nine. And it's a 4 3 game. Oh. 
Left center field. Adam Jones will glide over towards it. To the way for the second out. Seems a, a tad annoyed on the mound. Well, nobody likes to uh, waltz into an inning. And, you know, I guess I have somewhat of an advantage only because I was out there so long. But you know, like, again, you look at him and you're going, okay, this is a finely tuned engine, and maybe it'll, one of the cylinders not firing. But the walk—that's what probably bothered him the most. You know, you're going to give up your home run. Santana could hit him. We know Napoli can hit him. Terra again, fourth time up, probably coming in the game now that they're within one. I think he's thrown a game out there. Yeah. So you're going to throw your home runs. You just don't like to walk people, especially you know Lind Lindor can hit a home run. He did on Friday night off of Darren O'Day. But with that said, with a four nothing lead or four to one lead, you just don't want to put them on. Make him earn his way, and I'm sure that probably annoyed Chris Tillman. It certainly did me. Tillman is four and two in his career against the Indians, and the two losses have come in this ballpark. On two, line to center field that chases Adam Jones back, and Adam has it for the out. Big inning for the Indians. They get a pair of home runs and pull within one. Led to the fifth in a 4-3 game. Start. Uh, they rough him up in the first inning. He does settle down. You know, gives up obviously a run an inning and throws a lot of pitches the first two innings and, and all of a sudden started pitching. So he keeps him in the game. He'll leave. And now our Jiffy Lou pitching change brought to you by Jiffy Lou, where participating stores now do brake services. Pop in and let Jiffy Lou inspect your brakes today. Dan Otero saw him yesterday. Fastball. He's a sinker ball pitcher. Very low ERA. But a one run a game. You know, pitches to contact. See, right, he's lefties. Don't hit him well. Kept a ball in the ballpark. So the battle, uh, you know, of Chris Tillman against their bullpen. Indians bullpen is eighth in the league ERA wise, 3.70. They are five and eight with 12 saves. So they're going to have to work five innings in this game. Well, yesterday, what we saw, we saw we didn't see Cody Allen, their closer, who's 11 for 11, but we saw Hunter, we saw Manship, saw McAllister, saw Otero, saw Brian Shaw, we, we saw Austin. And yet they won 11 to 4. So everybody pretty much ready for today if need action. Kim Machado and Davis. Kim has struck out, he has walked. He has never faced Dan Otero. Ball one low.
Shows bunt, takes a strike. Yeah, same pitch. That ball was uh, pretty much, of course, Otero says, well, I'll take that one. And now Arrive will come in at third base, a step, just in case Kim will put it down. And not a hard thrower, but it's, it's, it's a movement. And he's got a good change up. He's got a curve ball to come off it. So he can mix up his stuff. And he gets Kim. It's a five at 89. Yeah, it's a great idea if you're really a speedster to take that first strike and maybe bring them in by faking a punt, but that might be the best pitch you get to play. And then Otera, of course, he's a veteran. I mean, he just goes right up the ladder. With a little bit of extra, good pitchers can add, and of course he's master of, of, of subtracting too. Grew up in South Florida, now lives in Arizona. Here's Manny, one out of two, to extend his hitting streak to six in a row. And fouls it off. Terra originally was drafted by the Giants. And in March of 2013, he was claimed on waivers by the Yankees. Slow roller towards third. The race is on. Uribe barehanded pickup throws and got him. Yeah, man, he's trying to help the first base umpire, Gary Cedarstrom. But Uribe, you know, the article talking about how bad their defense was in Cleveland. And Throw looked like it beat him, not by much. Because if you talk to a lot of the coaches, they said they're, they're surprised. You can see it's almost like he's trying to get his footsteps down. But they were saying how much bigger Manny Machado is. I mean, leg wise, he's just getting older. I mean, 30, 23, going to be 24, so maybe there's no reflection on how he's played. He's just not quite as quick as he used to be. But again, Uribe takes the base hit away. Two in a row retired. Here's Chris Davis. Ball one to Chris. Walked and scored. He is grounded out. For six hits and 35 at bats on the road trip. He has seen Otero three times. He's one for three. Yeah, it's over what about 113 games with the A's. He went 10 and two, and then he. And then all of a sudden he did pitch well. And that was 2015. High fly ball slicing down the left field line towards the corner, towards the pole, and that ball is off the wall and in play. And it caroms again away from Ramirez. So Davis is in with a double. Yeah, Ramirez said, I didn't have to run as far when I played shortstop. I mean, because he is an infielder they put out at left. And the Orioles are running him around this ballpark. I mean, just a towering drive. Again, the high wall, 19 feet out there, just barely. And you're right. I mean, you you commented yesterday. Otero can't believe it went that far. Maris, of course, I'm, it's so high, it's going to be a double anyway. But he's having a little problems actually playing the caroms off this this wall here in Cleveland. He's got too close a couple of times, and it's bounced right by him. So Trumbo with an RBI chance. Slow roller foul. Trumbo had the big hit in the first inning. Bases loaded double to clear the bases. So now 37 RBIs to lead the club. Manny has 29. Scope and Davis have 28. Ball and a strike. Trumbo one for four head to head against Otero. Davis in scoring position with two men down. Another foul down the line. This one bounces up into the crowd. You know, Otero at 6 3, and so the one thing's not a hard thrower, 90 91, but he does get on top. 
you know there used to be a saying and I guess you could still say tall and fall. I know you're not a power pitcher and that way you get more movement stay behind the ball a little bit easier versus getting around it. And it's an easy whatever it is is it's kind of an easy you know, you know, it gets the outside corner. Strike three call gets Otero out of it two run double a man left mid fifth in Cleveland. Tillman back to work in a one run game. Brought to you by PNC for the Achiever and you and uh, somebody who I think is knocking on the door Chris Lee left handed pitcher at double a buoy 23 years old in eight games seven starts five and oh with a two point nine eight ERA now he is not a strikeout pitcher he's a pitch to contact 51 and a third 19 K's and 13 walks and he was outstanding Monday at Hartford in a no decision eight innings just one run on seven hits he struck out four and he walked one. Yeah, the good news for him, I mean, even last year, what did he have? About 140 innings. Hopefully, you get him more. You, you know, it may even bring him up if you think. I don't mean to the big league; that could happen too. But you know, go up to Norfolk, you know, higher level, and see how he fares because you can always use starting pitching. Yep. And Chris Lee as Gomes swings through it on one. If you look at his game by game, Jim, he's had only one bad start all year. And a no decision against Reading on May 18th. He allowed six runs in six innings, but every other appearance, three runs or less. And there's a definitely a consistency there for Chris Lee at Bowie. Towards the middle, there's Manny. Will he have a play? He fires, got him! What a play by Machado! Takes a base hit away from Gomes. Well, the staff of the Indians, they're all saying, you know, has he been playing shortstop this well? And that's what he came up as. You know, Dean Albany, a longtime Orioles scout, lives down in Little Italy. I mean, you know, he's been watching Manny since he, you know, was playing at, at A ball. And he said, he's going to get bigger. Is he going to get stronger? He's a plus, plus defensive shortstop. There you see it. Gotta love doing that. And you saw Scope get out of the way. He hit the <laughs> deck <laughs> not to get hit by that throw by Machado. So that changes the inning instead of a leadoff single, one out, nobody on for Marlon Bird who takes a strike. Yeah, Bird lined out a little slider right at Adam Jones. One and one. Manny and Scope having a conversation about something. And a swing and miss one and two. Good off speed pitch. Yeah, he loves to change it. And that's what Santana hit. But uh, yeah, I think another thing we were talking about the slider this year for Chris Tillman, but also the change up to a righty. And I think what this might be, they grade each other on outstanding plays. There's a bouncer to Manny. 
you away. Maybe Scope didn't give Manny a good enough grade. Maybe that's what they're yapping about back and forth. Well, I don't know if, if, if I was an Olympic judge, he's getting the highest score possible. <laughs> ever. I don't think Jonathan gave it to him. Well, the other thing about it, I mean, you know, Jonathan on the right, he's as good as any second baseman I've seen in a long, long time, the way he's played this year defensively. And he is the only Oriole to be on the field defensively for every single play this year. And after we interviewed him at Baltimore, he said he could pitch. He's got them all. Well, maybe that would be your guy if you ever got out of a game. But they wouldn't do that. that would be a utility player. Rajay Davis batting for a second time. He struck out his first at bat. Yeah. Chris uh, Tillman trying to get back into rhythm and have an easy inning. There is such a thing with a one run lead against the Indians. Davis with the sunglasses on to protect from the glare. Fastballs up two and one. Yeah, the first time I ever saw anybody wear sunglasses hitting was in the no hitter the Orioles pitched in Oakland, 1989. Bob Malaki started that game. That ball's crushed to left field. Kim's not going to get it. And it's down for a base hit. Davis with his speed easily into second base with a two out double. So the tying run and scoring position with two down. Here's our express care express stat run differential by inning this year. The Indians. One through six, seven through eleven. They're plus fifty in the first six innings of games. So they scored three in the fourth, trying to get one back here to tie it in the fifth. Express Care, a LifeBridge Health Partner. For locations, visit whyweightintheer.com. Well, they also have nine come from behind wins, and you know, I would think part of that formula equation, whatever you want to call the numbers, we just saw is the fact that their bullpen hasn't been as good as they won, but they're not going to go away. With the lumber. That was another change up that stayed up that Davis didn't miss. And a bouncer to scope on the first pitch for Santana. And Jonathan gets him, and the Orioles get out of it. So double a man left. It all began. First batter of the inning, Gomes robbed on a stellar play by Machado. Major League start, and then he goes three and two on Trumbo, and you know he's fouling balls off. And, and there's another one, and then eventually has to throw him a strike with the bases loaded. It's a missile off the wall. All three Orioles. Chris Davis all the way from first base. Orioles take a three nothing lead. They add another one, and then here come the, the Indians. Antenna for the home run, and then the two run home run by Napoli. Those are your Geico highlights. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com for a free rate quote. Readers take strike one, a ball and a strike now. Scope and Rymel will follow. 
And there's Jeff Manship getting loose, one of the eight relievers in that bullpen. The Indian starters have 21 wins. They're 21 and 13. So 34 decisions in 47 games. Well, they will get better when Carrasco comes back from the hamstring. You never know if this will be immediate because, but 14 game winner last year. Saw Salazar, you know, saw Bauer. And Weeder strikes out. Second time today he's gone down on strikeouts and three for Otero since coming on last inning. Well, there's a baseball term called uh, when you don't pick the ball up, they call it, you know, the ball jumps out of your hand sneaky. And you know, it's been going around for 30 years or 40 years. And so, you know, it's a 90 91, but do you pick it up? Does it have great life? It looks like that's what Otero stuff is. And then the other thing is the ability to pitch down early in the strike zone and then elevate. As a hitter, you're seeing different eye levels. Ball one inside the scope. John Doubleton scored in the fourth inning. He is one out of two. Now it's a three game hitting streak going. Pop foul the other way. Tillman is pitch well one bad inning which he allowed three runs on a pair of home runs now back this way here's your chance Jim got a maneuver gotta have those chairs with wheels on them. <laughs> still one of the greatest ever is where you got out of the way pretty quick well, yeah I know well I practiced for years um, when the ball came up in the booth in Camden Yards and Tom Davis I think it was HDS at the time and Tom Davis is going to do his show behind us and I actually as I get out of the way on the wheelchair the chair falls over and Tom in the background it's like a, it was like a prize fight he's counting giving me the tent count and it hurt my elbow I mean, killing my elbow I landed right on my elbow I mean how about this try to catch the ball and you wouldn't fall no you get hurt you break your fingers your hand yeah. No, no, that's that's for silly people. <laughs> uh, uh, that made his day. He'll bring that to school tomorrow. No, he won't. School's it's over. Day. <laughs> School's, School's not over yet. Well, some st states. Ow. Oh yeah, school in some states. New Jersey, they went to like the third week of June. Yeah. yeah well, I, what are you trying to say? <laughs> no, I'm just saying that it, it's <laughs> early to be over. That's because they have all the snow days and all that <laughs> yeah, stuff right. there. <laughs> That's yeah. right. All right, it's going to be a nice storm next week. Let's call it off. I pop up. Shallow center field Davis charging in and two away in the Orioles sixth inning this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Orioles it may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Terra's come on and done a good job he's retired five of the six batters he faced here's Reimold and he'll take a strike yeah such late movement yeah, you, you know you think that you don't want to swing at it if you're Nolan Reimold or anybody because if you're right handed because the ball's running in at you and you know that's a ball that's very hard to hit anywhere but to the third baseman and then he comes back with a really good breaking ball Kipnis calls off Santana and a three up three down inning. So Otero's doing his job, keeping it as is. We'll head to the bottom of the six. Tillman and the O's with a 4 3 lead.
NC Bank for the Achiever in you. And by American Standard Heating and Air, it's their all-star sales event with up to $1,100 in instant rebates or 0% APR for 36 months. Downtown Cleveland, Ohio. As Chris Tillman goes back to work here. Tillman has allowed three runs on just three hits. Facing Jason Kipnis. And outside 1 0. This is a big, big game for the Orioles. And as they're heading home for the showdown with the Red Sox, you'd like to go home on a positive note. Now back one and one. And then you start talking about what do the Indians have in common with the uh, the Red Sox as offense. And, you know, yeah, they got to play Cincinnati. They played them in the back to back series, scored 43 runs in those four games. Cincinnati, the worst pitching team in the in the National League by about seven tenths of a run. They got a 5.50 ERA, a little bit over that. But these guys can hit. Well, we're tied. Kipnis gets in the one and hits it out to right. The third home run. And the Orioles have watched their 4 0 lead evaporate. Yeah, you know, Buck Showwater's biggest fear is that Tillman would get knocked out early. Well, he hadn't gotten knocked around early, but get, and if you don't make good pitches, and I've been there, I had through nine home runs in two games against the Red Sox once because they could hit a little bit as the Indians can, and then you don't make good pitches and you get bad results. I mean, they try to go in. He doesn't get it in. And this is 89. They can't pitch at 89 in the middle of the plate. So not to, to Jason Kipnis. You know, he's a line drive hitter that has home run power, and you just saw it. Here's Lindor, who walked and scored. He was on base for the home run for Napoli last inning, and it's low. So how about Tillman, Jim? In 10 starts, he had allowed three home runs in 58 and two-thirds innings. And he's allowed three home runs today and in five innings plus one batter. Well, he'll be the first to tell you. And I said about self evaluating. He, he just going, I, I, I haven't been pitching one. I don't think he had great stuff today. Didn't have a dynamic fastball. And then again, I, you know, I think the only pitch that really wasn't a bad pitch was the curveball to Napoli. It, 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 it was down, it was down and in, but he really put a good swing on it. But the changeup was hanging to Santana, and that was just. Fastball to Kipnis in the middle of the plate at 89. But I think what you'll get here, I mean, you're going to get the best that Chris Tillman can give you. And if you're Buck Showalter, you just have to decide again with a bullpen that's had a lot of usage over these nine days. When, when do I think enough's enough? No activity as of yet. Inside. There was a lot of speculation earlier today. Norfolk at home was rained out, but T.J. McFarland was a scheduled starter, and then they changed their starters. This ball's lifted the left field. Kim is back on it, and he's got it for the out, and one down in the sixth. Fans, the Orioles and Rays game that was rained out on April 9th has been rescheduled as game one of a separate admission day night doubleheader on Saturday, June 25th at 105. All the tickets marked April 9th will be honored for that game at 105. Now, the day's originally scheduled game for June 25th was scheduled for 405. It's now been moved to 705 as game two of the twin bill. So, for all the ticketing information, visit Orioles.com or call 888 bird Was Napoli, and there's a strike. So if McFarland scratched, there was wonder would he be heading here, or was he held out just in case Tillman did not get deep in the game, and they might need a reliever for tomorrow for the day game. Well, yeah. Buck Showalter always talks about it. it's not always getting knocked out. Sometimes uh, again, there's Manship getting loose, another former starter. So. It could be a line drive, it could be an injury. I mean, you just don't know. Owen two on Napoli. Overthrows the fastball. Yeah, 
but pitch count it only at 82. Again, not the greatest stuff, but I, I, I can't imagine knowing Chris Tillman that he plans on leaving unless they knock him out. Well, he's going to hang around for another inning and try to figure out, as he we've seen him do in years past, how did I do it? And now that this is the second best offense. And you can just see Napoli. There's 94, so trying to add a little bit that there. But it gives you an idea. They're second to the Red Sox. The Red Sox have played two more games, but they've scored 60 more, one more runs than the Indians, who are in number two place. That's how good the Red Sox have been. So that's probably you might be thinking about having a, uh, a rested bullpen when they come to town. Two and two. Yeah, the problem with Mike Napoli, and it's always been, is yeah, he'll strike out a lot, but he'll also walk a lot, and he could hit home runs. And Know what's going on, but he's very, very disciplined in this series. Home run today, home run Friday, RBI single yesterday on a good pitch. So he's not even beginning to chase that slider down the way. Well, Napoli was 0 2, and he's worked the count full. Well, he's become your worst nightmare if you're a pitcher. He's, he's going to make you throw it over, and you don't have your best stuff. And I never liked that. I can't imagine that Chris Tillman does either. And he gets him swing and a miss by Napoli. So on the seventh pitch, he picks up his third strikeout, two men down. So, so here we go. Good fastball. You know, it's not where he wanted to throw it, but he threw it. You know, and sometimes, you know, when you don't have your best stuff and you're trying to be perfect and make perfect pitches, just let it go. And uh, that good life, good velocity, great location. That would be a lot of hitters out. Uh, two down. Here's Jose Ramirez. Breaking balls low. Jose has struck out and flied out 0 for 2. The Orioles' starting staff is 10th now in the American League. Starters combined ERA for the O's 4.55. And they are 14 and 16 in 30 decisions. And you got to be careful here because Ramirez not a home run guy, but 3 and 0. Wouldn't be surprised if Terry Francona gives him the green light. Perfect pitch outside corner. Breaking ball three and two. So from three and zero oh to three and two on Ramirez. Three home runs for the Indians, and there is a two-out walk. Here's the second, third walk. Excuse me, third walk allowed by Chris Tillman. Indians are taking a page from the Orioles way of doing things with the home runs. The Orioles have hit just one home run in the series. That was Trumbo's on Friday night. Oh. On the pickoff attempt that gets away. So that puts the go ahead run in scoring position. Yeah they don't really run on him. You know, Ramirez four out of seven. You know, good speed but not a great base stealer. And just kind of throw over there and then you throw right into the runner and Chris Davis can't reach around him. I mean you can see this great angle right here. It shows you if it's a little bit to the right he's going to catch it but because it's into him. And then Ramirez as you mentioned represents the fifth run for the Indians out there. So the twelfth error on this road trip and this is the ninth game on the trip. Twenty eighth error on the year. Gets Ramirez to second base with two down with a contact hitter at the plate. Your rebate. And not a great year with runners in scoring position. Came in at 212. But the hits he's gotten in a series, you know, they're, they're up. He's able, he's a good high ball hitter. Ball one inside. 
and a bounce into a double play. Six to four to three, right to Manny Machado, and then he lined out to center. He's had one of his two at bats have been good ones. Slap fouled the other way, one and one to count. And the other factor is Ramirez with such good speed going on contact, he's going to score easily wherever he hits the ball if he gets a base hit. Fans now into it. Ball and strike on your rebate, fouled off the other way. Tillman through the first three innings faced nine batters and he allowed just one base runner walked to Napoli in the second and Napoli raced on the double play Jim just talked about. Since then he has allowed four runs on four hits three of the hits home runs. Yeah, He got to the second time through the lineup but they made some adjustments. Ball and two strikes on your rebate. Bouncer to third Flaherty's right there. And he'll get it to first in time, and that ends the inning. But the Indians tie in the home run by Jason Kipnis, our Honda do ups as we head to the seventh. Ryan Flaherty, Adam Jones, and Yunsu Kip. It's Miller time brought to you by Miller Light and today we're going to talk defense How about this play up the middle Gomes hits it Manny gets their slides gets up and he guns them down at first takes a base it away from Gomes from shallow center field with that gun of an arm and denies Gomes on that base hit. Nicely done Manny. 4-4 game and we go to the seventh. The pitcher comes on for the Indians. Here is Jeff Manchu. Yeah, I saw him yesterday. Uh, you know, a guy that uh, signed with the Indians. I mean, really been around. Originally signed with the Twins. So, uh, you know, three pitch pitcher. 90, 91, 92. Throws a lot of strike curveball changeup. But not a lot of innings. And he's you know, kept the ball in the ballpark. Only the one home run to this point. Here's Ryan Flaherty who's had a good day. Towards the middle. Lindor back of the bag, gloves and guns him out. Lindor was shading up the middle, so he was in perfect position to go get that one. Yeah, that's old time baseball. You don't have to put any dramatic shifts on. If you do, you probably he may have gone to his to his right. So that's old time. You just maybe plays two, three steps up. Of course, if you're Lindor, you can go to your left or your right so well that he, he can actually go into the hole the other way and still throw people out. Brad Brock now getting loose for the Orioles. Tillman's at 96 pitches through six innings. Adam has walked and scored, struck out, and grounded out. 
goes Munt takes a strike. Looking down at Uribe who's staring down at him wondering uh, was that a deep or is he going to bunt or what should I do. I'll move in a step because of it. Swing and a miss the slider down in the way. Not in the same zip code on that swing. That's what the good slider does. Jones has faced matchup only twice. He is one out of two. Wow. Went further outside. <laughs> well, I think he slipped, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of what I was alluding to. Chris Tillman threw a couple of those in Houston. He said, I don't I just don't know what happened. And you could see him, he just spun out, he's looking down. You know, you get to this point of the game, there's different holes on the mound, you know, both push off, landing. It's like you're on Mars sometimes. There's another slider. And you know that that Brad's a great breaking ball, but get it down and in, and you might have a Napoli result where the ball ends up into the bleachers. So the slider's a great pitch when it's thrown maybe the outside third, and then you just let the natural tilt and break. Now still in Dorrit short. And two down in the Orioles seventh. You can follow Orioles baseball live with the MLB.com at bat app. Stay up to the moment at any moment with game day. Live game video highlights, stat cast, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your phone or tablet. Show Walters Birds tied with the Indians here 4-4. And here is Kim who has struck out twice and walked. Strike one on the inside corner. Yeah, we told you that Manship comes out of the, uh, the Twins organization. If you can't throw strikes, maybe that's how you end up in another organization. But he did coming through. I mean, they pride themselves in, in their minor leagues. You know, you know the, the, the walk percentage per nine innings coming up through the minors. He spent seven seasons in the Minnesota organization and left as a free agent. Since then, he's bounced around a bit. Well, he's not overpowering. Doesn't mean he can't get people out. And, you know, a lot of times it's about the wow factors. You know, figure somebody may want you because they think you can make the, the appropriate pitches and, you know, they, you know, character issues and things like that. And, but I don't know if he's ever going to be one of those guys. That's going to light up the radar gun, but that again, that doesn't mean you're not going to be able to get people out. He was at Columbus last year, 23 games, ERA of under two runs a game. Cam right field is this number one? It is gone for Kim, and the Orioles have the lead. His first major league home run has put the Birds on top. Boy, did that ball get out of here in a hurry. Well, it's a short porch here, and, you know, this Lindor hit one on Friday night, and, uh, you know, of course, you're probably going to give him the silent treatment, you know, first major league home run. Well, they may not, I mean, they're really elated, but they're not going to let him know. He's certainly going to celebrate by himself, and I don't blame him. He's going, what's going on here? There you go. <laughs> Well, that's the one thing, and of course, you know, um, I didn't spend a lot of time in spring training because of my wife's hamstring injury. But everybody said he really did fit in. And, you know, he started out 0 and 24, your first 24 at bats, come to a different culture, two-year deal. But everybody loved him because he's a good guy, uh, and this makes him even better. What have you done for me lately? There you go. Little toe tap. Well, and here's the other thing, and I hear you talk about it all the time. As a starter, hang around, hang around, hang around. Now, if the Orioles hold on here, Tillman gets a win. So he did not allow the Indians to take the lead as Manny can't check his swing on that off-speed pitch, and he strikes out to end the inning. But Yoon Soo Kim gets in the one, his first big league home run, and on the seventh inning stretch, the O's have the lead.
So Kim gets his first big league home run. It breaks the 4 4 tie, gives the Orioles the lead. So it's Tillman's game to win. Here's Brad Brock. Yeah, really been pitching well. And of course, uh, he will come in with a one run lead. Low ERA. It's actually a save opportunity in a sense because he's coming in to hold the lead. Stays, keeps the ball in the ballpark. Yeah. Great power change up through seven in a row on Friday to get through the early part of the lineup. So Chris Tillman, as you said, Jimmy, does hang around. I mean, I know he's not going to be happy with the walk for the Napoli home run. But again, the Indians can hit. So he does send him. He's kind of like a prevent defense in the NFL. Got the early lead. You know, as it turns out, he has a chance to win, as you mentioned. Joey Rickard comes in for defense. So Kim, nice home run. See you later. <laughs> and we're going to try to maintain his one run lead. So that won't be easy because we, we nine know, outs. Yeah, this is yeah. You need nine outs before they get a run, and and if they get a run, then you need to add some runs, and you're going to try to do that anyway. So he must win Sunday afternoon game in Cleveland, and you know the Indians aren't going away. Here's John Gomes, then Bird and Davis, lower third of the Indians lineup. Foul at the plate. Yeah, the difficulties are relieving. You come in, you got a one run lead. And obviously, they want to do damage. You don't really know which is going to be your best pitch. He's got three choices. Slider's a good one. Did give up a double on the slider on Friday night. 94, 95 with a fastball. And as we mentioned, after the double, he adjusted and used the changeup. He said five consecutive scoreless appearances. Yeah, it's hard to teach that. I mean, now what what is a little bit easier when you have the kind of arm and the height and the leverage that Brad Brock has is well, what do I need to do with my wind up to be able to repeat it and make that quality pitch? It doesn't get a whole lot better than that fastball. Right on the corner. It looks like we're that's where Matt Wieters is going to go again. A little bit off the corner. Two and two on Gomes. Who has bounced out twice to Machado. The second one, spectacular play up the middle. And Brock gets it. Swing and a miss by Gomes, one away. And Brad. 29 strikeouts now in 26 innings. Well, this is, I mean, it's not about always stop. We saw Otero come in and, you know, really pitch well, throwing 90 91. But when you have the kind of stuff and the movement and the velocity and then you locate like that, it's never easy, but it's certainly less difficult. Here's the veteran Marlon Bird, who has lined out and grounded out. He'll take ball one. Bird is 0 for 3 against Brock in limited opportunities. Marlon now 38 years old. He's out of Marietta, Georgia. 15th big league season. All down the line. Now, if, if he saves team luggage, he, he <laughs> has quite a collection. The Phillies, the Nationals, the Rangers, then to the Cubs, then to Boston, then to the Mets, then to the Pirates, then back to the Phillies, then the Cincinnati. Then the San Francisco now in Cleveland. Ten different uniform numbers in the 15 years in his career. Good fastball. You know he was part of a, a game back in 2012 when the Orioles really got back on the in the win column in a sense. Up in Boston. And do you remember what part he played in that game? That 17 inning game. He was the guy that got thrown out at home plate on a great relay in the 16th. He'll strike out here. And then the Orioles, and Adam Jones would hit a home run off of the center fielder that was one of our Darnell McDonald. Yeah, he, Darnell McDonald. I mean, here's 94 again, right on the corner. But I think J.J. Hardy threw out Paul uh, Marlon Bird at home plate with, to end the inning. And then Chris Davis came in, struck out Adrian Gonzalez. And found out that not only could Chris Davis hit home runs, he could pitch a little bit. Rajay Davis will take a strike. 
Well, I never forget Darnell McDonald or Jason Worth because they were the top two picks in the draft my first year with the club in 97. As a catcher, Jason Worth. Yep. High school catcher out of Illinois. Shaw and Adams are getting loose. We saw Austin Adams yesterday. We saw Brian Shaw yesterday. And it's down and away. Two and one on Davis, who's one out of two. Yeah, we, uh, we you know we saw a little bit. He had a change up down the left field line, a high change up back in the fifth. That's where his power is. High ball hitter. Got to make a pitch here, and he does. Down and away. So he's looking fastball. Can't quite get to it because again the velocity and the location. I think that's a big. To me, that's the big difference. Uh, you know, the change up has been really special for Brad Brock, but fastball command. Two and two with two down. And there is that change up, and the bottom drops out. Pretty good plate discipline by Davis not to swing at this. He wants to. He just got fooled. And there's a two out walk. Yeah, and time run is on. Yeah, and uh, with his ability to steal a base, it's almost like throwing a double. I'd be very, very surprised if they don't try to steal a base, even though they do have a home run hitter coming to the plate, Carlos Santana. Well, I think our Maryland Lottery contestant of the game, Joe Reichel of Northeast, was very, very happy on the $500 because of the first career home run of Yoon Soo Kim that gives the Orioles the lead. Here is Santana, one out of three with the solo home run in the fourth that got Cleveland on the board. The Orioles at that time led four nothing. Strike on the outside corner, good pitch. Yeah, the difficulty is you need to hold him. You need to not give uh, Raji Davis a, uh, a running lead. You don't steal a lot on Brock. Only attempted one and they haven't been successful. But also you need to get Santana, who's a home run bat, out of the plate. Pretty good first move. Chases yeah. him back. So very, very quick move. Years they have led in stolen bases in the American League going back to 1960. In this season, they're 80.4 percent, so better than all those other years. Yeah, five of them yesterday, 37 on the year. It's such a fine line between uh, making sure that Roger Davis doesn't get a running lead and still getting out Santana, who represents the go ahead run. He runs, slips, and Weeders holds on to the ball. Matt didn't pick it up in time, or he might have had to play it first. Yeah, he's going, and then uh, apparently he didn't feel like he got a good jump. One and one the count on Santana. Orioles have the shift on. Flaherty moves from third base to shallow right field. Right there. Throw and the tag right to the uh, top of the right arm. So you can hold the ball, you can throw over, you can slide step. In other words, the front foot, maybe lower the leg kick a little bit. Foul off the other way, it's a ball and two strikes. And this might be. The pitch he goes on again. Even if he's thrown out, you'd have Santana yeah. leading off in the eighth. But you also, I mean, I guess if you're Terry Francona, I mean, they, you know, they get the times, they have the times. They're being scouts. How quick you know, Brad Brock is to the plate. And remember, he's six five. But the leg kick is not pronounced. 
Fly ball left center field. Ricker doesn't play. Joey backs up on it. And he has it for the out. So the two out walk doesn't hurt. Brock gets out of it. We will head to the eighth in Cleveland. Good game. O's have a 5 4 lead. with a 5-4 lead on this solo home run by Kim. His first major league home run. Greater coverage of baseball is brought to you by T-Mobile. Well, the Red Sox leading the Blue Jays in the seventh inning. David Price, another strong outing, has returned to Toronto. David Ortiz, how about this, Jim? Day-to-day -day with a foot injury. Hit by a pitch on Saturday. Yankees lead the race 2-1 in the eighth. Jake Odorizzi flirted with a no-hitter, but... He's allowed two runs, so he now trails Geyer two for four with a double. So there are the standings with the Orioles one game back at Toronto, four games back. Yeah, so home run uh, hitting Young Sue Kim. So I asked Aunt, uh, Austin Adams yesterday. I mean, hard thrower, I mean, from 96 to 97, hard slider changeup. And his mission is to keep the game where it is, if possible. See, not a lot of innings. He was uh, pretty much pitching down at Triple uh, A Columbus, where he was very good. Pitched in 14 games down there, and in you know, a power arm, big time power arm. Strike one to Chris Davis, who is one out of two of the double. He's also walked and scored. So Chris now has a three-game hitting streak. Same pitch, same result, 0 and 2. This will be his fourth appearance and has yet to give up a run. So Manship is the pitcher of record at the moment on the downside, Tillman on the positive side. Nothing doing in the Oriole pen. And Davis goes down on strikes. Yeah, perfect outside. Uh, Fast balls at 96. Right where Gomes is sitting. He with us yesterday out of Alabama, Faulkner University had some shoulder problems, so he has worked his way back. Certainly looks to me the shoulder's feeling pretty good. I think he's a hard breaking ball to go with that 96. Now there is the big swing by the Orioles today. Bases loaded, double back in the first. Bouncing towards the middle, Lindor is there. And two down to the Oriole eighth. There's Matt Wieters who needs a base hit to keep that hitting streak going. He's over three. Struck out twice and popped up. I didn't want to know. Yeah, I would guess if you're throwing 97, the shoulder's probably okay. 
Well, we saw he came up a little bit last year at the end, and you know, we saw a powerful arm. And of course, they they know the Orioles like the ball out over the plate. Gomes, as you can see, inside half, trying to get it right there, right where the glove. Well, you don't get the call. Set up inside, and he yeah. hit it. Yeah, and you could see the, the facial expression by Austin Adams kind of tells you the story. And a base hit for Weeders. He keeps the streak alive. Got ahead 2 and 0 and looked fastball and he didn't miss it. So well, Matt, Matt now is hitting nine in a row. Yeah, Matt, uh, he's always been a rhythm hitter. And, uh, you know, he's a smart guy. He, you know, went to college, Georgia Tech. But he, you know what? He's going to time a fastball. So we know how hard he throws. He knows. You know, and again, I mean, it's such an easy swing when he's seeing the ball well. You know, again, you pitch him away, he'll hit it the other way. I mean, that's. And you saw that before the Tommy John surgery because he got off to a great start really worked hard on being able to hit a little bit better from the, the left handed side of the plate being a switch hitter. Well, the scope takes a breaking ball for a strike. John doubled and scored to the fourth Orioles did a good job that in manufacturing a run lead off double scope moved up to third on a fly ball by Rymel then scored on a sack fly by Flaherty. He got a pitch to drive, but he pulled it foul. Way down there, down the left field line. Yeah, that's the hanging breaking ball, and he, he doesn't miss that pitch very often. Not too many hitters do, but I mean, Jonathan Scope. And we've seen him hit some balls down and in. Kim. Nice little, nicely, yeah, if you're going to time your first home run, nice to do it when the game's tied at four and four. This ball's trouble right field charging in his bird he'll get there and he's got it for the out so scope is retired and the Orioles are down in the eighth it led to the bottom of the eighth Rock and the O's protecting a one run lead. Ten game homestand at Camden Yards, so celebrate Memorial Day with us. Game one is against the Red Sox. Tyler Wilson on the mound against the knuckleballer Stephen Wright. Our coverage on Masson begins at 1 o'clock with those extra presented by Southwest. Then game coverage at 1.30. We've got all the access you need right here on Masson. So there are the Red Sox, the best offense in the in the league. You can see uh, Xander Bogarts. Bradley, what, his stop 29. Ortiz, of course, loves to hit there. Let's hope his foot hurts. Uh, Kim really got on the close save. And then, you know, and then right, Eduardo Rodriguez, the lefty, came out of the Oriole organization in the Andrew Miller trade. He has yet to pitch. So the day gets loose. And then I think what Joe Kelly and Porcello, who've got a much better year this year for the Red Sox so far. Darren O'Day getting loose. And Eduardo Rodriguez will. He's coming off the DL, he hurt his knee in the spring. Long time coming back. Yeah, it's kept, two months. Kept this you know, dislocated kneecap for Eduardo. The big lefty. Kept this, as you called, that a strike. 
again uh, it, the seven straight change ups were Jason Kippis the other night. So again the, you know multifaceted reliever with three quality pitches fastballs and change ups there it is. And he, I don't know he may have been looking for it. So they get what they want lead off better traveling by one. So maybe a little bit too. I mean, watch this ball go down. But it's in the middle of the plate, so all he has to do is drop the bat at him. That's all he does. Nice, sweet swing. Again, Kipnis last May got 51 base hits in one month. Francisco Lindor is 0 for 2 with a walk. Normally don't see your number three hitter asked to sacrifice, but he does have one sack on the year. Terry Francona at home can play for the tie, trying to get it even, knowing he, he would have the last at bat if it went extras. Yeah, but he's also what up in the top in the top ten batting average. Very surprised that they would give the Orioles an out here. Never know. Flaherty playing right even with the bag. You know, the other thing about Lindor, we saw him, and you know, Rock throws a little bit harder, but he did hit a home run, so he can he can do a lot of things with the bat. He has seen Brock only once. He is one for one against him. Inside ball two. Well, the toughest of leads as you look at Allen, their closer, Tommy Hunter. The Orioles roughed him up yesterday. They had to. Came in when the game was what eight to two, and kind of batted him around. A good fastball right there. Tried to get on top of it, but couldn't. So Brock trying to protect this one-run lead. He has a day getting loose behind him. Tying run on on the leadoff single by Kipnis. Swing and a miss. Boy, he was really fooled by that pitch. Well, we talked about three quality pitches, and here's one of them. Slider goes straight down. Now you throw that same pitch and get it off. It's a pitch that Lindor could hit into right field and maybe get the first and third situation. Now, of course, let's see if he can get him out and change him. Wow. Rip to the corner. That ball is off the wall and in play. Heading at third is Kipnis and Lindor on at second with a double. So the tying run is at third. Go ahead, run at second, and nobody out in the eighth. I'll tell you what, did he get on top of that 95 mile per hour fastball? Well, you know, you don't get to see a lot of the players all the time. So he comes to the big leagues and he went, hey, him. And you think maybe he's looking for a changeup, but he almost hits a home run. That's going to get uh, Brock out of the game. What a big, big hit. So Brock leaves. O'Day will come on, second and third, nobody down, and a one run game.
Brad the Lindor. Similar swing that we just saw. Brock, because Brock throws a lot harder and a couple of walks. And a strikeout and somehow pitched out of harm's way because he had a six to three lead when he came in. Now it's five to four and uh, the, the winning or go ahead runs out on one second base. A tough, tough situation for Darren O'Day. Well, he has stranded both inherited runners he has had on the year. More often than not, he begins innings. Could be that Buck Showalter held him out until now to get past the Lindor at bat. Lindor homered against him on Friday night. So Napoli two for 15. And one of those two hits is a home run already. You can see there's the numbers. He's had a nice series home run Friday. It hits yesterday. Big oh. home run on a curveball this afternoon off the Tilden. Orioles have the infield up close. Ball one. Well, again, the go ahead run. You don't want to have a big inning, but two runs would be a big inning with a one run lead in the eighth. So you do have a base open. So you got to decide who you want to pitch to. And of course, that's what Darren O'Day is the master of doing that on most occasions. Ground ball to third. Flaherty will freeze the runner. One down in the eighth. And a nice little sinker. Well, make your pitches, and there is one of them. You know, Napoli said, you know, he's been so good out over the plate that, you know, O'Day, again, he's a location guy. It's not about velocity. I mean, he may top out at 87 every once in a while. He said when the wind's blowing in, make it to 88. So now Ramirez will be walked to set up the double play possibility. On your rebate. Was going to hit. He's been called back. Well, Ramirez came in hitting 393 with runners in scoring position. So you're not going to be pitching to him. Chisholm Hall. And if you go back to Friday night, he is the guy that they intentionally walked to get to Chris Jimenez, who hit the double play in a six to four ball game with O'Day on the mound. Orioles leading because. Buck said, well, I really don't really like his swing against Darren O'Day. Today, no choice. And Ramirez is hitting that well. And now they start to discuss strategy. So Chisholm Hall replaces Uribe. Jerry Francona going. Lefty righty Chisholm is also harder to double up than your rebate. He had to leave yesterday's game. Uh, got some dirt in his eyes. He had a double hit the first slide, so maybe dizziness. He has bounced into one double play on the year. So he's looking for a fly ball, base hit. Fly ball ties it. In depth. Base hit will probably give him the lead with Lindor on there. Darren O'Day is looking for a pop up double play strikeout. Again, I mean, you're going to cover the outside corner and he just gets hit by that pitch. There are a lot of hitters that would have turned into that if they had the protection. There's another one. But Darren has allowed runs in two of his last four appearances. Going back to the Tiger game when he allowed the back to back home runs. Two runs in that game, one run here on Friday night, and the three runs allowed in those games have all come on homers. He's got to come in here 2 0. Rip foul. Wow. Yeah, you've got to throw a strike, and Chisholm Hall knows that. Just a little too quick. The only good news about that is number one, you get a, you get back into the count a little bit. And what Darren O'Day does, I mean, he trusts. Again, this is the difficulty for relievers. You got to come right in and you know, go ahead, run at second base. You walk a guy, and then you got to make not only make great pitches, but you have to. You don't know which one's going to work, but you got to trust him. 
Two and one with the bases loaded, one down. Line drive, foul. And that time it's a, it's a slider and it breaks his bat. And now you, you may possibly, and we'll see how this plays out, you may get him in a little bit more defensive position at the plate because of the count. You see that 125 batting average on two and two pitches. Now you can kind of look for your pitch when you have the pitcher in a hole, the base is loaded, and a chance to get a go ahead. Hit. It all changes when a pitcher gets, especially a, a pitcher like the day gets back into the count. That's what he's been able to do. Two and zero to two and two. Base is loaded. One run game, one man down. And he fights it off to stay alive. The Indians are two for 18 pinch hitting this year. This is the first time Chisholm Hall has pinch hit. Are loud here in the bottom of the eighth. Tight game. Another foul ball. Yeah, trying to go up the ladder and uh, he's still able to make contact. Yeah, a lot of drama for a game that the Orioles said at the top of the fourth inning led four to nothing. And a couple of home runs in the fourth by the Indians got him back in. Kipnis would tie it, or as we go ahead on the Kim home run, and now you're in this dilemma. This will be the seventh pitch in this at bat. So a day at Chisholm Hall are really battling here. Another foul ball. And another pretty good pitch right on his fist. Five consecutive foul balls. You have to throw on the breaking ball. Black Rock anxiously looking on. Yeah, very interested spectator. Now back this way. So six consecutive foul balls after he got ahead 2-0. And what Darren O'Day can do, and we've seen him many times, he could sink it a little bit, but he can also ride it. And, you know, just throws one four seams, gets underneath it. That's what he's been trying to do, try to get a pop up, maybe a strikeout, but doesn't well not not buying it so far. Ninth pitch in this at bat. Oh, Strike him out with oh. a breaking ball. Oh. Well, there you go. Dress him in all black, and uh, you know he may come right up through the window and steal your burg you know, as a burglar, because he's got some guts. But he gets behind him, gets back in the counts, then tries to strike him out. Fastball after fastball, Chisholm also nice at bats. It's at five, and then they hang, and not a hanger, I guess, but it's just a deceptive breaking ball. It ended up right down the middle of the plate. So how about that? Weeders waited until the ninth pitch to call for the breaking ball. It's not out of it yet. Here's Gomes. Who is a clutch hitter for the Indians. He's 0 for 3 today. It breaking came, ball for a strike. It came in at about 130 points higher than his 246 batting average uh, with runners in scoring position. Saw it yesterday, drove in three. And he was a tough out on Saturday because he would use the whole field. Up the middle and right field. Oh, for five lifetime against Darren O'Day. Upstairs. Now brought close attention to Darren O'Day here. Swing there. 
And that's what you read. You know, you can see the. I mean, I always look at pitchers. You can kind of tell by their facial expressions. And you know, especially a veteran like Darren. And goes, okay. I mean, I got away with one a little bit. I got it up. Maybe he didn't get it in. And then, guys of his ability, he's been that good over the last what, four years for the Orioles. You try to make an adjustment off that. You try to read the bat head where it was. Bases loaded, two down, one and two on Gomes. Struck him out, and the Indians don't score. What a job by Darren O'Day. He's the new Houdini. Second and third, and nobody down. And Darren O'Day comes on and saves the day. We head to the ninth with the O's in front. Baseball on Masson is brought to you by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. And by visitannapolis.org. Create your moment at visitannapolis.org. Darren O'Day, what a job by the Oriole reliever. Second and third, and nobody out, and he preserves the one run lead. Well, if I'm going overboard, I want him to throw me the, the life raft or the. Uh, a little bit of help as Tommy Hunter will come in on the second day. You know, yesterday came in, the Orioles roughed him up. So not a lot of innings. You know, had a you know, core problem. So he missed a lot of spring training. Worked his way back. You can see lefties hitting him at a high clip. The fastball. Now Chisenhall comes in, and not able to get the run or runs in. So he goes out the right field. And Ramirez Good. is at third. Marlon Byrd moves from right to left. Uribe was pinch hit for. Well, you'd love to add some runs here and make it easy for Zach Britton, who will come in. Deep left field. That ball's got a chance. Back it goes, and it is gone for Rymold. And a huge insurance run for the O's. Well, the lefties were punishing Tommy Hunter in limited at bats. And, you know, one thing about Nolan Reimold, I still remember when he came up, but uh, Terry Crowley was a hitting instructor, one of my teammates, great pinch hitter in his own right. He said he's the only guy in our organization that can hit home runs without trying to do it. And you just saw the power when he's healthy. Doesn't get to play a whole lot. But when you make a mistake in the middle of the plate, that's the result you get. And the result gets our Maryland Lottery contestant of the game, Joe Reichel, another $500. As Flaherty fouls it off. You know, so good pitch early on. They try to get it out of way again, and he just ball runs back in the middle of the plate. Tommy throws a lot of two seamers, so a little left to right movement. So instead of getting it on the corner, ends up in the middle, and the Orioles get the sixth run.
One and one on Flaherty, who was one out of two plus a sack fly. The sack fly came in the fourth inning. Well, it's, you know, they added that fourth run. I mean, for his, his first uh, RBI of the year. And a bouncer foul. Well, Caleb Joseph now, the only player who's been on the team all year without an RBI. Talking to the hitting coach. Longest RBI droughts by plate appearances to begin a year. Oh, oh. Bordy down the radio booth. I hope he's looking. 87 to begin <laughs> that season. There he is. Yeah, see, look how yeah, Bordy, we're looks. talking about you. That's right. And he looks very concerned about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at Flaherty's going, what? I mean, it started in the first inning when Cleveringer threw a perfect slider, and you know Buck doesn't want to get thrown out. He said, "Come on, we got a two-run lead, and uh, you're a defender, and a good one." And Adrian Johnson said, "Well, you know, I've been bad all afternoon. Why are you going to complain now?" And his ball, what? I don't know. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's what's what's just south of Cleveland? Canton, Shaker Heights. No, that's north. Well, ever some one of the suburbs. That, that's how far <laughs> that ball was off the plate. It was in the burbs. Oh. I guess if you're going to take one for the club, you know, six to eight inches outside, you like to do it when you're up by two. There's the well located fastball. Adam is 0 for 3. There's the lefty Ryan Merritt in the Indians pen. And Mr. Britton getting ready to come on for the save. Now a two run lead to protect. Adam the other way, slicing towards the corner. A long run for Chisenhall, and he runs out of room. It's in the stands. Eight, nine, and one coming up for the Indians in the bottom of the ninth inning. Adam with a lot of patience here. Let's work the count full at three and two. Yeah, and if you're going to lead off, which he's done the last three games, it's you know, doesn't have a hit as of yet, but he does have a run score. He walked the lead off this game. And he walks here. It is the second time this year he's had at least two walks in a game. Let's get a look at the Lexus of Towson drive of the game. Hyun Soon Kim in the seventh. Yeah, 4 4 ball game. Uh, well, you got to hit a home run. They hit 28 of them last year in, in Korea. And then right there, they give them the, uh, the silent treatment until maybe 30 seconds. So that's your drive of the game. Brought to, you by, yeah. brought to you by Lexus of Towson, the area's number one luxury dealer. Come see why. At LexusOfTowson.com. Joey Rickards first at bat. He took over for Kim defensively. Yeah, Scott Kulbaugh had a little talk with him. He said, uh, you know, you've taken a lot of pitches, but what do you do best? And that's hit the fastball. So sometimes that could be the best pitch you're going to get to hit. Just got one down the middle, and there's a hanging breaking ball. So if that's your strength and you're coming to the big leagues, and you just remember what you do best. Because the league has adjusted, he said, "You know, you got to adjust again." Tommy chases Adam back. Adam walked three times in a game, April 23rd in Kansas City, and he has two walks here today. Like I said, you have to walk him. Now he know, hey, different position, leading off. That ball's troubled down the line. That is a foul ball, faded foul. So 
Rickard comes back. Visit MassettSports.com slash CareFirst to vote for today's CareFirst Fearless Player of the Game. Live fearless with the name trusted for over 75 years. CareFirst Blue Cross Blue Shield. I think Darren O'Day is going to get a lot of votes. Kim will get some. Rymel probably will get some for his home run. Strike three call. Ripper down on strikes two away. Yeah, nice pitch by Tommy. I mean, he still has good velocity, late movement. You can see where Gomes is sitting. Ball runs back, catches the outside corner. And because Tommy Hunter does throw in the mid 90s, that's what you're hitting off of. That's why Rymold, he's looking, you know, hopefully getting something in the middle of the plate. He does, and he hammered it for a home run. Manning takes a strike at the knees. Manning singled in the first to extend his hitting streak. Now it's six in a row. Half swing. And then a foul ball. Nothing in two. Newly fully bearded Tommy Hunter facing his former team. And he batting with Jones at first and two down. And it's outside. Red Sox and Blue Jays are now tied 3 3 in the ninth inning at Rogerson. Strike three called. So how about that? Tommy Hunter strikes out the side on three called strike threes, but the leadoff batter, Nolan Reimold, gave Zach Britton some insurance. Reimold, with his fourth home run of the year, has given the O's a 6-4 lead. Tom and Rick, thanks so much. They're standing by in Studio 24 for the happy recap. The first, Zach Britton has to get three outs. Yeah, 13 out of 13. So we do the interview. And uh, he comes in to do what uh, he started doing in uh, 2014. Back, Tommy Hunter was the closer. Zach had to be on the ball club, so he assumed the closer role. He's been really good. He's had 86 saves out of 94 opportunities. Uh, best ground ball pitcher in baseball. Nobody throws more grounders. And it's just amazing the numbers he's been able to put. You know, last year they put what 127 balls on the ground and 15 in the air. Uh, again, this year it's even better. 32 on the ground, two in the air so far. So they're looking for a base runner. Zach Britton's looking for outs. Marlon Bird takes ball one.
And line to center field, and just like that, tying run comes to the plate. Well, they're a tenacious bunch, these Indians. And, uh, I actually think that what that's the first first at bat. Yeah, it's never seen Zach before. You know, so you're hitting off 95, and you, you know he's trying to sink it, and you know he has the ability usually to do that. Davis two for ten. So you, you, know, we, you really because of the home run by Rymold, the, the run at first is. I mean, you want the runner to be there because it sets up a double play, but other than that, it's meaningless. Davis is the guy that you're really concerned about. He's fallen behind each of the first two hitters. Rajay against Zach is two for ten. Tough guy to double up though with the speed. Base hit. So the tying runs are on the winning run comes to the plate. Again I mean this is a good at bat the ball is up and that's not where Zach Britton likes to live. That's of course that's the kind of uh, strength that Roger Davis had good high ball hitter but it's also a very good approach. So that turns the lineup over back to the top for Santana. You don't like the numbers he is off Zach Britton. Three for ten lifetime. Santana has grounded into five double plays. Only Kipnis has bounced into more on this team. Yeah, all nine home runs from the other side of the plate because he is a switch hitter. 167 against the lefties. Swing and a miss. So he was anticipating fastball. And that's fine, uh, you know, because it's usually a ground ball pitch. I mean, that's that Zach doesn't mind if you look for a sinker if he throws it. The first two pitches were up. And let's give the Indians a lot of credit. Over the course of not only the year, because they're the number two offense in, in the American League, but even over the weekend. Talked about an interview, you know, of how about the pressure? Well, you know, you try to relax, and for him, it's you know, it's grip pressure. It's knowing what he needs to do. And very good at it. Here's, it's about making your pitch. He earned the save Friday night. Needed only eight pitches. Check swing, and it's a called strike. Yeah, and hitters tell you, you know, they, they they want you to bring the ball up, and you know, of course, he said his average strike starts around the thighs, but because of the movement and the ball when it's thrown well, now the first two didn't do this, so the ball will sink out of the zone. That's where he gets his double plays. That's where he gets his strikeouts. That's where he gets his grounders. One and two on Santana. Bouncer towards Flaherty. Second out there, back to first. Double play! They turned it 5 4 3. Yeah, Flaherty, you know, he slows it down a little bit because he thinks he might be able to tag Marlon Bird. But if you don't have Jonathan Scope, I, I'm telling you folks, this is the best fielding second base in the American League because there are not a whole lot of second basemen can make this play. Right there, he's going to tag. Ah, no, but I don't have a chance. Look at his arm strength from a standstill. Nobody else turns that play. I mean, there's your first part of it, but look at this arm strength. And that's the only way you able. Yeah, you know, Santana doesn't run well. But you just don't turn it. And they're, you know, they're welcome to modern day baseball. They're going to see if he was on the bag. Looked like he was standing on it. Well, Ryan should not have tried to no, but he tag did. the runner, and that delayed it. Well, I guess maybe are they saying did he actually touch the base? Because if he does, it'll be runners at first and second. I, I, I think it's the out at first that they're challenging here. 
fans are reacting to the scoreboard, but again, it's a bang bang play, and the call was out. So New York has to determine that Cedarstrom was wrong in his call, and there has to be evidence to overturn the call. And it was a bang bang play. Yeah, you know, the, the, there isn't a rule the tie goes to the runner. I, you know, it's not in the rule book. It doesn't mean that umpires don't interpret that. Of course, they run it on the board, and it's, you know, they got the new. New diamond vision here. And he's safe. They overturn it. So they only get one out. And again, Flaherty, that split second when he tried to tag Bird going by, cost the O's the double play. So that still keeps the winning run at the plate. Kept us hard to believe, but he is a good hitter, four for ten off of Brent. Mainly because he's a low ball hitter and Brent's a low ball pitcher. And again, his ability, if you look at Jason Kiptis, is you know, we, 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 he can pull the ball. We saw the home run. But he is a line drive hitter gap to gap. Strike one. Oh, that pitch up a little bit, but he takes it. Again, Kipnis leads the Indians in bouncing into double plays, seven of them on the air. And there are the numbers Jim mentioned against Britain. You know, is he susceptible to breaking ball? Yeah, but Zach hasn't thrown one yet. Swing and a miss. A 97 with great sink. So if you throw a slider, obviously you want to throw it out of the zone. The determination you have to make, along with your catcher Matt Readers, do I have a feel for it? I haven't thrown it. 0 oh and 2 on Kipnis. Runners at first and third and one down. Check swing and it's inside. Field. Wolf said he didn't go. I think it's about the swing. I think they thought they might have gotten the inside corner, but it's been a wandering strike zone. I, I don't think either Kipnis or Weeders or Britton knows what's going to be a strike now. I mean, we've seen all kinds of different pitches called balls and strikes all afternoon, just the way it's been. Struck him out! 96 mile an hour sinker for the second out in the ninth. Yeah, bottom drops out. So the first two hitters get on because he, he doesn't get the ball to sink. He gets it to sink to Santana. They don't turn the double play. And then all of a sudden the guy that's four for ten is now four for eleven because of what he does. He goes back to what he does best. So two men down. And Francisco Lindor. Yeah, who comes in hitting four. Hate to tell you, 436 against left-hand pitching with a home run. That's the highest number in the American League, I believe, against lefties. Swing and a miss on one. But when there are lefties, and then there's Brit. Well, that's yeah. That was going to try to get there. Again, that looked hittable till the bottom. Just ball went straight down. So on two. He is third in the lead. Bogart's at 462, Kinsler 439, and then 436 Lindor. Well, that's encouraging to look forward to with Bogart's in Baltimore tomorrow. Pitch around it. Pitch around the entire team. The way they've been hitting. Lindor is one out of three plus a walk. Nothing into the count. with it. Zach Britton after allowing the tying runs to get on comes back gets Santana on a bounce out and back to back K's and the Orioles get two out of three in Cleveland against a hot ball club. So back to the sinker and uh, terrific pitch. 
little concerned early on. A couple balls up, they take advantage of it, and then all of a sudden, Zach Britton now 14 for 14 and save opportunities. So the Orioles win. The Orioles are back home tomorrow. They'll begin a 10 game homestand. Come on out and celebrate Memorial Day with us. Game one against the Red Sox tomorrow. It's Tyler Wilson on the mound, and he'll take on the knuckleballer Stephen Wright. Our coverage on Masson begins at 1 o'clock with those extra presented by Southwest, and then game coverage at 1 30. And now for Jim Palmer and our entire hardworking crew, Jim Hunter saying so long from Cleveland. We're in a thriller. The Orioles hang on and beat the Indians by a final of 6 4. Today's telecast, a massive presentation. Tom and Rick, the happy recap after this.